I opened the first men's warehouse 10 years ago. I thought price was everything. I'm George Zimmer, president of the men's warehouse. As discounting has caught on, I found that quality and service are as important as price. While others may sell seconds, irregulars, and old merchandise, you'll never find that at the men's warehouse. What you will find is the same quality clothes sold in the finest stores for at least 20% less. I guarantee it. The Men's Warehouse, San Jose, Mountain View, Redwood City, San Francisco, Newark, and Pleasant Hill. What does it take to be an Applebee's salad? Great flavor. Lots of flavor in every bite. There's nothing like an Applebee's salad. That looks good. It's our Aztec chicken salad. It's new. Zesty pepper grilled chicken. It's delicious. It's great. Fresh, crunchy romaine. Black beans. Sweet corn. Fresh. Really crunchy. Crispy tortilla strips. Pepper jack cheese. Ooh, this dressing. It's zesty. A lot of different flavors. And they're all so good together. I have to try that Aztec chicken salad. It won't be around forever. Taste the new Aztec chicken salad today. One of six delicious salads during the salad days of summer. That's why I belong at Applebee's. There's been a lot of talk about this next song. This song is not a rebel song. This song is Sunday. 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 I can't believe the news today. I can't close my eyes and make it go away. How long? How long? Let's we sing this song. Too, too, too long, for too long. Tonight, we can be as one. Tonight, tonight, tonight. Broken bottles under your children's feet. Body strewn across the dead and streets. But I won't leave the battle hall. It puts my back up, puts my back up against the wall. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Sunday, bloody Sunday. Let's roll. Well, happy Sunday fun day to you. I hope you're all having a, a wonderful weekend. I know I am. I had a bit of a different plan in store for today, but some things changed around a little bit. So we had to adjust on the fly. Originally, the stream was going to be at about 5 o'clock, somewhere around there, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, in, in that window. But um, <laughs> things took a turn. So we're doing it now. Fuck it, we're going to do it now. You uh, might have an idea of what's going on. Maybe you don't. So I'm going to try to give a little background information before we jump into the really fun shit. So let's start at the beginning. Let me, um, let me set the mood for you. Takes place at an Applebee's. There's our waiter. Trying to bring us a nice soy latte. Look at him. He looks so proud of his outfit, doesn't he? Isn't he handsome? What a handsome boy he is. Well, our, our big boy, our big Applebee's waiter boy, uh, he's very proud of his outfit. He's very proud of his amazing looking suit. It's highly tailored. I think it's Italian. We're talking maybe some Armani level shit. I, I can't really comment on it because I'm a suitless fuck and artless. I'm artless and suitless. So this is an amateur talking. But Sargon of Akkad was invited to the EU Parliament by the political party, UKIP. And he was going to give a speech in front of everybody. He was very proud of this. This was a big accomplishment for him. And for whatever reason, and I, I couldn't tell you what it is, he decided he wanted to send me some messages about his big day as a, a breakout political actor. He, he wanted to share his glory, I suppose, with uh, us peons. And so he sent his little Romanian vulture, V, and he flew across the internet and he delivered this, like the good little gelding he is. And uh, these are some of the messages I received from Sargon of Akkad while he was preparing to speak at the fucking uh, European Union. Jim is a scared little boy who needs to bully those smaller than him. I'm literally dealing with pan-European politics. I have a press conference about Article 11 and Article 13 today. I will be wearing a suit. Jim probably doesn't even own a suit. Blown the fuck out. How, how am I going to compare European politics? He's going to be wearing a suit. I don't, how can I compete with that? <laughs> I mean, sure, you might read those messages and come away with a different impression. You might be reminded of, uh, I don't know, something like this. I am a division manager. That is very important. Do not raise very your voice important. at me or You don't Derek. talk to Do me like that. People are scared of me. 
I drive a Dodge Stratus. You will fucking respect me. But Sargon went and he did his big boy thing. He's very, we're all very proud of Sargon's big boy accomplishment. And people were tweeting about it. Uh, you could see people from the uh, European Union talking about this. Like War Plan Purple. At the European Parliament in Strasbourg, with Count Dankula, David Corburn, and Nigel Farage as they show love to the working man by posing for pictures with the staff of a local cafe. Isn't that nice of those finely dressed gentlemen to take a moment out of their day to take a picture with Sargon while he's, you know, not too busy on his shift? I think that probably meant a lot to him. I mean, <laughs> Sargon is, he's a big boy now. He's a very big boy. I'm a big kid, look what I can do. I can wear big kid pants too. Pull-ups training pants work better than any other training pant. Pull-ups have leak shields. They keep wetness in God, and confidence high. I can pull them off of them? and on. It's really come a Big long way. confidence it? begins with pull-ups. Look at the pride on Mommy, face. wow! Oh. I'm a big kid. Now, perhaps, perhaps Sargon was a little excited. Maybe he was just excitable. I mean, we can all understand that. It's a big moment in your life. You know, <laughs> there are many things that could explain why you would send such weird messages to a, a stranger, almost, on the internet. Lots of, lots of different reasonings as to why Sargon might be acting like he is. A lot of good points in it, mostly focusing on, on how, how communicate, human communication. But who knows? <laughs> It'll have to remain a mystery. So Sargon sends me his messages, and he goes and he does his little publicity tour at the European Union. And sadly, they don't stop Article 11 and 13. I guess having a fat man read articles about why feminism sucks in front of the EU Parliament didn't really convince them about data protection and individual rights on the Internet. It was worth a shot, though. Those fucking SJWs, am I right? He gave it his best. I mean, you've got to give him an A for effort. An A for effort. Sadly, he did not win the day. Now, a lot of people made some jokes about Sargon of Applebee's, talking about how his suit was just disheveled, just dis just shameful, how it was all saggy. And we all know what they say about sag. If you sag off, your swag's off. You know the rules. Just not a good look. Well, Sargon took umbrage with this. He wasn't, he wasn't happy about it. And he blamed me, innocent me, for all the harassment he was receiving, apparently. I, that's the story I'm going with. And decided he was going to set up a stream called Hello, Jim. And he was going to, uh, I guess, stream, uh, stream his grievances about me. Now, initially, he had set it up for three days in advance. That's when Sargon was going to do this stream. He was going to blow me the fuck out of the water. He was going to teach that motherfucker Medicare a lesson. Big Daddy Sargon, the stepfather, head of the uh, skeptic family, the Don himself, was ready to go to internet war with a shit poster. Obviously an action befitting a future politician. So the date was set on Sunday, and it was going to begin at 4.30 in the afternoon. I, being the playful individual that I am, said, that sounds wonderful, Sargon. I'm going to stream snipe your stupid fat ass and make a shit ton of money off of you while I laugh at how dumb you are. While Sargon kept a brave face on, he wasn't intimidated by this in the least. He was going to stream at the designated time until he didn't. Until he, until he decided to be a bit of a bitch and change the time. Now, people have speculated that Sargon is afraid. Sargon scared. Sargon worried. So Sargon decides to stream at a completely different time, very early in the morning. Different than when he had listed on his video. And we are going to watch some of this. We're going to watch how a, how a master uh, goes about their business. This finely crafted shit that Sargon has put together. Now, I want you to keep in mind, too, one of Sargon's favorite memes, because this is the father of fucking Kekistan. All right, this guy knows hot banter. All right, I, I think all the kids know about Kekistan. Maybe you've heard of Peepee -Pee the Frog. Okay, this badass on screen, he came up with that. Fucking drew it himself and copyrighted it. So he is a meme master. 
Sargon of Applebee's is the meme master. And I was, I, you know, I was a little nervous. But one of his favorite memes, he loves to talk about boomers. Loves to throw that out there. Oh, old man, you don't know what you're doing. How technically inept is Jim? Jim just wants to be one of those cool kids on the internet. But he's really a boomer. So, just keep that in mind as we watch this amazing stream which is in no way completely fucking retarded and incompetent. Now, give me one minute while I pull it up. Get ready, grab some popcorn, get a fucking drink ready. This bad boy's like an hour long. We'll skip around. We'll get to the good shit. But let's uh, let's hear his case. Because maybe I'm the, the biggest piece of shit on Earth, so I think we need to hear him out. That's initially what I wanted to do, but again, Sargon's scared. So Sargon don't want to do that. I, I know I should be I should be hiding under a rock right now, shaking with fear, because I'm about to get taught a lesson by by Sargon of Akkad. Oh well, here comes the ass pounding against Jim. Oh shit. Okay, now hopefully you can see that. Well, hopefully you can see a few things. A couple things to keep in mind. Uh, that chat box on the right hand side. Well, Sargon, because he's such a brave motherfucker, he's not scared of anything really. Uh, he decided to turn off chat. You know, just to, to teach the SJWs a lesson. Hey, Anita, you remember Sargon, the guy that said you're a hypersensitive uh, little snowflake? He couldn't take the heat on the internet? Yeah, that's right. Same guy turned off his chat window. Hey, Zoe, remember how you used to cry about harassment? This badass motherfucker is going to show you. He's going to teach you a lesson. He's going to turn that chat box off. So fucking brave. Just so brave and wonderful. I want this man to be my politician. Can we make him my Paul? Is that possible? Can we get him elected in the United States? Is that is that reasonable? I, I don't know. I just, I want to build a shrine to him. I want to build him a little fucking shrine. Now, that, that can't be right. I think something must be wrong with this video. Because those likes and dislikes, I don't know what's going on. Why are there, why are there more dislikes than likes? Clearly, the master of fucking banter, Lord Kekistan himself, shadowed the fuck out of people. Why, why would so many people be disliking this video? I don't know. Let's take a look. Let's play it. Let's, let's see. He's going to drop that heat right at the beginning. Let me just uh, mute that. Now, Sargon, being the hip guy that he is, knows that all those young kids, if they love one fucking thing on Earth, it's Billy Joel music. I don't know about you, but when I hear teenagers talking in the mall, you know, as I'm stalking them from my van, all they can talk about is how fucking amazing Billy Joel is. This is the most current hip shit on the internet right now. I don't know if you're aware of that. It's very, it's very amazing. So you forgive me. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because I can't handle how cool this music is because I'm just not that hip. So let me just jump ahead a little bit. Just a little bit. I don't know what Billy's singing about. Something about fires. I don't know. It'll be a mystery to me. I just don't get kids' music this day, these days, you know. Oh, oh, I don't jump ahead too far. Okay, I think the intro's almost over. Yep, yep, the intro's almost over. We're going to go right to audio. Now watch me click over to audio so you don't get confused. You might get really fucking confused about what's about to happen. Here we go. That, that audio bar is all the way to the right. Are, are my speakers broken? I Hold on. I don't hear any sound. What? Can you speak up, Sargon? I, I, I'm not hearing anything. Clearly, the master of technology, the young, hip, cool guy who's totally not a boomer himself, didn't start a fucking stream with his, his own audio muted like a fucking retard. And then disabled his chat so nobody could tell him, hey, retard, your audio is muted. That would be fucking embarrassing. Imagine how embarrassing that would be. If you talk a bunch of shit to somebody, tell them you're going to stream at a certain time, then run away from that time because you're a pussy, disable your chat, and then fuck up your audio. And let's say, let's make it a nightmare scenario, hypothetically speaking. And you left that audio muted for like 20 minutes, and you're just smugly chuckling to yourself. Just a big, fat, fucking soy smile on your face as you smugly chuckle. Look at, oh, all the jokes I'm thinking of, they're all so funny. Oh, I bet the kids are going to love this. 
they'll print them on Kekistan shirts. But I'm not, I guess my, are my headphones broken? Chad, can you tell me, are my headphones broken? I think maybe my, I, there must be something wrong here. Something, something's gone awry. Uh, well, he's talking about a tweet uh, it's from Wild Smile. I'll read along until I can fix this clearly on my end audio issue. Let me get this straight, Warplan Purple, otherwise known as Sargon of Applebee's, is going to dox a guy for making fun of his suit? There's something compelling, or there's some... Oh, I, he jumped too fast. I just can't keep up with him. I don't have that youth and vigor that he does. I just... I'm an old man. I can't keep up with this. Here's another one from Wild Smiled. I just don't approve of a big-time YouTube personality aspiring politicians intimidating people. That's kind of a deal-breaker for me and many others. Intimidating people? What is he talking about? Well, Sargon did have a bunch of links in his description. They went to, like, Kiwi Farms. There were some screen caps from 4chan. I mean, we'll see him in the stream. And we'll, we'll probably hear him read along if he can, you know, fix his, uh, fix his fucking audio. You know, watching this stream, when I first watched it, <laughs> and just awestruck uh, amazement at what was going on, uh, when I first watched it, I, I was vaguely reminded of what it was like to have a grandparent with Alzheimer's and how they just stare vacantly as their VCR flashed 12. Like it was a mystery of the universe. Like, why is that number flashing? How do I fix this? I'm so confused. Rebecca, bring me my medicine. I don't know what's going on. And I got that feeling. I got that feeling deep inside of me. Watching Sargon fumble and bumble his way around this fucking live stream. I mean, these are some sick fucking bants, I agree. But um, it doesn't really do me any good because I can't hear a fucking thing. And I can't even read his lips. He's just got text on the screen. And there are no subtitles. So Sargon's audience shows up. And they're watching a live stream with no fucking audio. For 20 minutes. Uh, apparently people had to call him up on Skype repeatedly and say, hey, um, hey, you fucking asshat, maybe turn your microphone on. Maybe, maybe it would help if people could hear what you're saying. Let's uh, skip ahead and see if we can find that moment. Uh, is this the moment? No, no, I think this is when he fell down the stairs and broke his hip. Let's uh, jump ahead a little bit more. No, I think he's taking his insulin shot. He's got diabetes. Is this it? Nope, nope. Grandpa's still really fucking confused. What is this? What is this computer shit? This the AOL looks different. Grandpa doesn't know what's going on. Uh, let's skip ahead a little more. Uh, Causing many oh, to oh, leave. Here we go. Here we go. Asment for the quite as old as the the subject of the stream. Anyway, now here we go. Sargon is going to be reading from a blog post written by Haberman. Now, Haberman was the founder of the website Medicare. And this is after Haberman got troll's remorse and decided that uh, he couldn't live with the guilt of the things that he had done. So this is like a 30 paragraph long letter. And he's going to read some, some excerpts from it. So let's, uh, let's hear what he's got. So Metzger began in late 2008 and fell apart in early 2012. Over the course of three years we managed to do a lot of damage, often to innocent and undeserving people. While we took pride at the time of putting positive spins on our operations, claiming that the people we were attacking had it coming, or that they had learned valuable lessons. It can be safely said that now, now that our actions at the time were indefensible, plain and simple. Founded by me, Haberman, and the elusive Catalyst, the original goal of the organization was to get away with juvenile trolling under the banner of activism, claiming that our actions would somehow act as a catalyst for some sort of unspecified positive change. Oh god, that's cringe. Who wants to positively change the world in some unspecified way? I would have been more respectful of this if they just said we're just trolling for the fun of trolling. As new members were recruited, and we'll talk about that in a bit, because this this is a very interesting thing, this recruitment. Oh, it is very interesting. I'm on the edge of my seat for this story. Our methods of trolling became closer to resemble targeted harassment, with the primary goal of the site forum being dedicated to gathering and distributing the personal information of our unfortunate targets, with a YouTube channel dedicated to commentaries 
over other users' videos, a page on our site dedicated to mocking submissions to DeviantArt, and a growing directory of our target's personal information, we were systematic in our approach to harassment. Furthermore, we were able to manipulate other services, such as the original ED, in serving our efforts and using our connections to guarantee, of us, guarantee ourselves favourable front-page coverage. At the same time, we managed to maintain a legitimate front by enlisting insidious individuals to create content for us, which... <laughs> Oh, sorry, less insidious individuals to create content for us, which allowed us to continue to pass ourselves off as activists and e-humorists. Of course, the true intent of the core members of the organization was far darker. Now I see why Jim doesn't think that I'm doing this just for the activism. Because he didn't. Well, it is part of my Machiavellian master plan, but we'll get to that. Let's hear a little bit more of the backstory of the nefarious Haberman in the dark entity known as Metacore. As opportunities for larger exposure presented themselves to us, we took full advantage of them. Continuing, con continuing to contribute to in ED would eventually win a sy uh, sysop status, blah, 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 blah. We played a dangerous game with many of our operations, narrowly avoiding any sort of serious consequences for very serious charges. We blackmailed police officers, impersonated religious officials, intimidated the families of our victims, and punished unstable individuals to the point where they suffered complete breakdowns. Now that kind of that kind of sounds like it's still going on, doesn't it? I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't agree with what Monday Matt did, and I don't agree with Monday Matt posting an apology to his Tumblr. Mon Matt, you should definitely post an apology video if you want anyone to have any kind of respect for you in the future. However, I've been watching what's been happening to Monday Matt, and my goodness, <laughs> it's very reminiscent. Very reminiscent. Now, I'd like to take a moment, because I think you guys need to meet the Dark Overlord, the Duder himself. The Lord of the 24-Hour Ops. I think you need to to see what he's like. To see if this matches up to the story you're listening about, about uh, blackmailing police officers and impersonating people and driving victims to uh, insanity and suicide. So I'm going to I'm gonna pull something out of the vault here. I know I'm interrupting uh, Don Sargone. Give me one moment. I think it's, it's, it's time the internet met Haberman. Uh, you've seen his picture for years, but... Um, let me introduce you to the troll god himself, the lord of the ops. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, this is the, um, the supreme leader of the evil organization known as Medicur. If you have children watching, please make them look away. I don't think their, their sanity can take what they're about to witness. If you have a weak stomach or a heart condition, you've been warned. This is a troll god you are about to witness. Let's use the light in here, okay? Check it. Yo, this is your boy, Scooby-Doo Joint. All the motherfuckers best of point your ears to this message. It's a message of respect. God bless us. Yo, much motherfucking wicked clown love. Speak up. I can't hear you over the sound of the dick in your throat. You can't cross this moat. My castle is the dark carnival. Hanging out with my family. Juggalos, you can't enter. You can't trespass, otherwise we're gonna beat your ass. Yo, you think you're so hot shit. Well, guess what? It's the lighter part, idiot. You're not anything that I can't beat. So get out of here, be the best move your feet. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yo, it's your boy, Scooby Doo Joint, recording for Juggalos Online 666. I know it's it's harrowing. The troll god himself. I I don't know how I survived my time in Medicur. Clearly this man this man is a demon god that walks among humanity <laughs> sowing discord and reaping sorrow. He's unstoppable. I mean when you watch that video of him singing about his juggalo allegiance, you can clearly see a man that can blackmail police officers. But uh, let's get back. Let's get back to the blog post. I'm sure there's much more interesting things to listen to. I mean, it's, it seems weird as well. It seems that 
I mean, it's not like I call Monday Matt a strong person, a strong character. But anyway, subpoenas, takedown requests. Uh, sorry, did I? Oh, no, 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 no. Let's, let's, let's back up there. Um, it's difficult to ascertain if we were directly responsible for any loss of life. But the unfortunate reality is that we may have very well likely been so. It, also, it almost seems petty to say this, but the thought of this will likely haunt me to the day I die. Subpoenas, takedown requests, letters of legal intent, and pleas from the friends and families of our victims were all laughed off. We took nothing and no one seriously, and rarely faced any immediate consequences for our actions. Can I get a can I get a whoop whoop from the chat? Much motherfucking wicked clown love. Okay, Hatchet Nation, can you hear me? Do you hear the Lord of Ops here talking about how he the life ruination he he wreaked on the internet? Okay. One of the few measurable blows to Metacro over the course of our run was when we were removed from our seats of power on Encyclopedia Dramatica, but not before removing some of their primary benefactors, resulting in the eventual closure of the service itself. Which, I mean, that's honestly, for me, that, out of this whole thing, that's the worst thing you could do. I'm a big fan of ED. I love ED. How dare you, sir? But now, wouldn't you think that if Carl wasn't a complete fucking new fag imposter, he would understand that People that claim they've taken down Encyclopedia Dramatica have never once taken down Encyclopedia Dramatica. But he loves it. He's fucking hip with the kids. You saw Billy Joel at the beginning. Clearly, the words of this juggalo have a great deal of weight. Haberman destroyed Encyclopedia Dramatica. I know that's recorded nowhere on the internet, but it fucking totally happened. Behind the scenes, and this is the bit that really gets interesting, egos among the core organization clashed with one another, causing many to leave and pursue other projects. There was a palpable sense of paranoia, as well as those who remained not only feared the traitors, but the other remaining members of the organization as well. There was no trust between any members of Metica, and none of us could truly call each other friends. Anyone who made the mistake of revealing any detail of personal information was consequently mocked and shamed for it, which I can personally the attest led to a lot of pent-up stresses and pain. Ultimately, paranoia would be the primary force that would kill Metica, as se several of the few remaining members I feared that I would repurpose the site in order to propagate, advertise a new YouTube channel, blah blah blah. I wish I could claim it was because I would matured to the, enough to the point that I had wanted to move on, but it had more to do with the simple fact that times had changed. Social media was quickly evolving, people were becoming less concerned about their personal information being made well, he says private, but I'm sure he means public. And our old tactics were having less impact on a new generation of netizens. Rather than growing to recognize the error of our ways, but by that point in time, we had simply grown tired. And so Metzka died not with a bang, or even as so much as a whimper, but instead quietly overnight and without warning or notice. Well, actually, Metzka died when Haberman decided he felt guilty, I, I don't know, for being the most hardcore juggalo on the internet, and somehow managed to wipe out every archive from archive.is to Wayback Machine, he's purged everything. You'll, fa you'll find like maybe one or two screen caps of what the forum was like, but there are no archives. He was so he was so worried. He wiped out everything. Every trace he sent down notices to every archiving site that existed because he desperately didn't want Medicur as a name to live on. It's almost like I adopted the name Mr. Medicare just to fuck with him for laughs. I don't know. I can't comment on that. Now, I'd go into the rest of Haberman's post, but it's about how he became an SJW, and I don't give a shit about Haberman being an SJW. Very interesting how this is all about egos, and about the, uh, the fact that Jim, my good buddy Jim, was directly involved with this. Now, let's get to Doxapalooza. This is the Kiwi Farms post that I'm particularly interested in because of this quote from Haberman. At the end of the day, it's very hard to fear Jim when I know what he's really all about. He can dox me again and call me a traitor or whatever he wants, but it really doesn't mean much to me coming from a pathological liar like him. Man, there's some shade there, isn't it? I know. I mean, I'm blown the fuck out. Chad, can I get a B for blown the fuck out? I'm a pathological liar that totally doxed Haberman. You know, it's weird, because somewhere buried in the back of my mind, I can sort of recall having a fucking conversation with... Who was it? Who did I have that conversation with? <laughs> who, did I, who did I talk to about? Oh, do I have the clip ready? I might not have the clip ready. Hold on. Give me a second. Oh, Boomer GM fucking it up again. Try to have it all nice and ready for presentation. 
Oh, no, no, I do have the clip ready. I sort of seem to remember having a conversation with, who was it? Oh, yeah, Sargon, about the this exact issue. And it's almost like Sargon has conveniently forgotten what I told him. Let's see if we can, I don't know, let, let's, let, let's listen in a little bit. See if we talked about this at all. Do you ever miss the uh, internet aristocrat identity? Just that interesting. No, because that channel was created, uh, the reason the channel was originally created was to screw with the um, ED singers, Encyclopedia Dramatica singers. Back when DeGrippo ran Encyclopedia Dramatica, she would let people pay her to keep articles off the site. And EDS Singers was one of those people. So Haberman, who was friends with the Sysop on ad, wanted to screw with the EDS Singers, but he didn't want to put it up on a Medicare uh, account. That's why Internet Aristocrat exists. It was uh, just to fuck with one group of people, and that was it. Oh, that's weird. I guess we did kind of talk about it. Huh. Oh, that's convenient. I guess maybe in old age you have a bad memory and things slip your mind. Or maybe he was just really drunk and scared because he was going to get raped by a gay man that night, and so he couldn't concentrate hard enough? I don't know. I can't give you the reasons as to why Mr. Sargon of Applebee's might have forgotten these small details. But uh, let me enlighten you with the story of what happened with Haberman and who doxed him. And you don't even have to take my word for this. You can go look up the articles for Medicare on Encyclopedia Dramatica or the EDS Singers. Or you can talk to any sysop that has ever been on the website, and I'm sure if you bring it up, it will jog their memory. G'day guys and welcome back. We are all human. Someone can screw up and you can still remain a fan of their content. So let's get back to the story Jim was telling. A long time ago, Haberman ran Medicare. And one of the members on the board, or one of the members on the forum, was LMTE, who was a sysop on Ed. Well, there was a group on Encyclopedia Dramatica, the ED Singers. Now, the ED Singers financially contributed to Encyclopedia Dramatica. Now, Haberman hated them. But he couldn't make fun of them. He couldn't make articles on them. He couldn't do anything to them. Because Cher DeGrippo, who was the owner at the time, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't let anybody fuck with them because they were giving them money. If you've heard of troll shielding... Haberman helped write the fucking article on that, and he wrote it because of these people. So, Haberman starts fucking with them, and he, he convinces people on Medicare to start fucking with them. He's getting personal information. He's sending shit to their houses. If you go look on the ED Singers uh, page, it talks about a Medicare member who's a friend from England who sent some dirty pictures to her friends and family. I wonder, I wonder who was a member on Medicare that was from England that could have done that. Maybe starts with an H and ends with a bomber guy. I don't know how much of Medicare, like old stuff, is public knowledge. But yeah, H bomber guy, he was a Medicare member for a while. Like. And now he's like some far left idiot. <laughs> now, this proceeds for a while. And finally, the Edie Singer, uh, I can't remember her exact name, but if you look at the article, you see it, decides that she's going to sue Haberman for being an internet bully. She's going to take down the Juggalo Lord. So she files paperwork. She gets his information, and she sues his ass. And that paperwork gets put up on Encyclopedia Dramatica. Haberman got doxxed because a fat girl got mad at him on the internet. And that is a verifiable story. Go ask a sysop. Go look at the article histories, and you will see that for yourself. So, you know, Jim, the pathological liar that docks the Juggalo Lord, maybe didn't actually dox the Juggalo Lord. Maybe his internet war with Encyclopedia Dramatica and the ED Singers was what got him doxed. I don't know. But I am a, I am a filthy liar, so maybe you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't go along with that. But let's continue. I'm sure there's more nuggets of wisdom in Sargon of Akkad's deep dive into internet lore. Pathological liar. I mean, I'm just saying I'm not the one who's who was part of a an internet doxing group and harassment group that hated and feared one another because there was absolutely no trust between them. But I can see that if I'm being an activist on the internet and someone else sees that and they are part of such a thing, they could think that there were darker intentions behind it because they had darker intentions themselves. So we're going to go through a few streams now, and uh, I need to go through a few clips, because that was the original intent of this stream. But instead, 
What happened when I posted this is there was a fucking meltdown on Twitter. I mean, specifically from a chap called Wild Smile, who was leading the, the gym defense force. Yeah, Sargon is particularly angry at Wild Smile. I can't really, I can't really comment on that. That's kind of like a side thing that was going on. But it's weird that Sargon would know what Wild Smile was even tweeting about, because Sargon doesn't have a Twitter account, unless what every fucking person on Twitter is claiming right now is true, and that War Plan Purple is his Twitter account, and he's too much of a pussy to admit it, I guess? I don't know. But we'll listen to this, and then we'll jump ahead to the good bits. Let me get this straight. War Plan Purple, otherwise known as Sargon of Applebee's is going to dox a guy for making fun of his suit. That's some compelling, ethical behavior for the there, Sargon. Quite the future of politics in store for you. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, I don't know what kind of person dislikes a stream before it's even happened, but if you look at the stream now, there are oh, probably well over 2,000 downvotes, because that's the sign of people who are certainly not mad on the internet. They are not bothered you know, not mad on the internet, like getting upset because somebody made a joke about your shitty looking suit and then setting up a stream where you get angry at somebody for making fun of your shitty little suit. Not mad like that. Mad differently, I guess. A different kind of mad on the internet. But Sargon, the Kekistani lord, the ultimate young hip kid who's not a boomer at all and technically inept or stupid, he's going to school us. So let's uh, just keep listening at all that I'm talking about a particular guy and they are not acting in defense of him preemptively. <laughs> there is nothing to hide here. There's no nothing to fear. Nothing's going on and there's certainly going to be loads of doxing involved. Wild Smile is not lying on the internet. He's being totally honest. I mean, he doesn't approve of big time YouTube personalities or aspiring politicians intimidating people. It's kind of a deal breaker for him because he's an ethical guy. I mean, he is jumping well, I would disagree with Wild Smile on this. I'm going to have to take Sargon's side. He's not at all intimidating. Have you seen him? He looks like the Pillsbury Doughboy. I don't, is he going to bake me some delicious fucking breads? Like, I don't know how that's intimidating. It sounds like a, a full-fledged meal to me. I bet if I push him, if I poke him in the little tummy, <laughs> little appetizers will shoot out of his mouth. He's like a, he's a little dispenser. To the defense of someone who was, <laughs> for, <laughs> for God, God knows how many years, doing exactly the thing that he apparently disapproves on. But that's okay, Wild Smile. No one expects consistency or honesty from you. No one expects that. Because you're one of the people who, uh, who joined it, weren't you? Weren't you? Or were you? I see Chad is saying Sargon has joined uh, to view with us. Um, if you could give him instructions on how to turn on the video and get the volume to work so he can listen along. I know he's a little bit slow when it comes to technology. So just be gentle with him, chat. Try not to say anything too fast. You might spook him. Old people have a habit of getting spooked easily, and I don't need somebody having a heart attack. After all, I've got a whole list of victims, according to the Juggalo killer. You know, police officers and uh, all sorts of people. I don't want to add a politician to the list. But anyway, like I said, I'm not for doxing. I'm actually completely in line with Ethan Ralph here, the um, the tall, upstanding pillar of <laughs> pillar of society. I mean, he's just okay with having a doxer on his Discord server. But like he said back in 2015, it's not his thing. But I can see the lols, and I'm I'm with you, Ralph. I'm with you. It's not my thing either. But I can see the lols. It's you know, I mean, I wouldn't do it myself. But if someone else is going to do it, it's just a good old laugh. So, where were we now? Oh, you know, before he goes on, uh, can somebody explain math to me? Because I'm really confused. I mean, Sargon's got a big brain, so maybe he can do the, the formula for us. Um, Sargon of Akkad's Thinkery channel has 296,000 subscribers, and his stream had 4,500 viewers at the, the highest number. My channel, which has less subs than that, has 268,000 subscribers, currently has 24,000 people watching is I don't understand. Sargon, can you make that compute for me? Can you use your, your thinking thoughts and your big boy brain to maybe do the math for us? Okay, let's continue. All right, okay. I think we'll go for this one. So this was interesting. So there was a chap called, was it Lat Latmium? Something like that. I can't remember his name. But um, 
he uh, he was an old friend of Jim's. I won't go. I'll, I'll leave all the links of this to the, in the description of this after I've finished. Obviously, so you can go through all of this on your own and have some fun. But we're, like I said, we're talking about our old friend Jim and his his time in Metica and in a previous forum called Bullshit Forums that I'd never heard of. You know, one of the strange things about Latvi Man's uh, appearance on this, and he was, by the way, a former Medica member, uh, is he also said that I doxed Taberman. That's kind of strange that he'd conveniently forget that, huh? Consider you can go verify this for yourself that Haberman got himself doxxed because he fucked with the ED singers. But, you know, just throwing that out there. We'll listen, we'll listen to a clip. Just make sure I've got all the sounds on because, you know, I don't have another boomer moment. <laughs> Smugly chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find it. Things about... Okay, here we are. Um, scroll, um, scroll. Right, examples of what I had to say on a, what a faggoty Sonic fan I am. I'm fairly certain that's not actually Short Fat Otaku's audio. I think Grandpa forgot to take his stroke medicine, and maybe he tipped out of his chair, and his tubby little ass knocked a speaker over, and now we've got an echo going on. I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe I should take some of these enormous amounts of super chats I'm getting, because Sargon's, you know, in poverty. He had to do a fundraiser for a fucking lawsuit, the poor guy. Maybe I'll take some of this money I'm making, Sargon, off making you look like a fucking retard on the internet, and I'll buy you a life alert bracelet, so you don't, you know, end up dead because your fat ass falls out of your chair again. Which is actually a Sonic fan? Sit up. Sit up. Are you actually a Sonic fan? I was. I mean, I, I still like the games, but like I used to be, you know, an actual uh, Asperg in in what a Sonic fan I was. Oh my god! Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Are you a furry? No, 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 no. no. Uh, I mean, I guess that, that would at least help balance out the fact that I'm not a trap, but uh, no, I'm not a furry either. Pretty, pretty, pretty fat one about really guessing both, but anyway. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, double, double trouble. Yeah. Mm, let's not get into that. Um, but yeah, so Bullshit Forums, it was just a... Uh, it was a forum that was mostly 12, uh, 13 year old kids all, you know, shit posting online and trying to be uh, funny and edgy. And uh, How old were you at the time? I This was 2008, 2009, so I was... 14. Okay. And, how, uh, how old was Jim? Because Jim was on these forums too. I, I have a, one of the posts there specifically has him referencing his age, which was, I think, 29? No, 20, 28 Jesus. at the time. Okay, hold on. Which, which post would that be? That's, that's kind of. Uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we are unprepared as fuck. As, as per usual. 28. Oh my uh, God, the old internet. The, uh, the, this this is old internet. Holy fuck, dude. Wow. Yeah, okay. this is, this is uh, long ago. Yeah. Now, that, that's part of his stream. The audio just, it kind of stops. I don't know. Oh, he's, he's jumping around the time bar. Okay. He's looking for that time code. How do I program this VCR? I don't know. Golden Girls is on, and I want to record it. Oh, Sargon. Why? Why would that spot be muted? Rewind. Holy fuck, dude. Wow. Yeah, okay. this is this is uh, long ago. But yeah, if you and go it, to the fetish test that. image, uh, that's where he references what oh, his age was at the fetish time. Fetish test image? Like I said, none of this oh, is none here, of this man. can be really verified to be fair, but um but it's interesting. <laughs> Like I said, none of this oh, is none here, of this man. can be really verified to be fair. Like I said, none of this, oh, this is none here, of this man. can be really verified to be fair. And if we skip forward a little bit. But, but yeah, he was so he was in his late twenties and uh, we were all like 13, 14. Um which honestly sounds creepier than it really was. He wasn't doing anything like really messed up or creepy with any anybody there. <laughs> Sargon, this is your own source. We did Chenmu, and then like for, for Christmas, we did Yakuza. So we've done both on, on NTG. And we've kind of compared them, and I was like, no, I still, I still prefer Shenmue. And then Blackface yeah, Black Kirby's like, what the, what the fuck, fuck is wrong, wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's, let, let's continue on a little bit, though, if you know um, I'm not saying, uh, uh, just to address the chat, I'm not also saying that all, all of you are definitely kids. I'm not saying everybody who likes Jim is a kid. That's not what I'm saying. Well, there is definitely a... Like you mentioned a pattern in our, in our PMs before this, before the stream. And there was a pattern of where 
Jim would join a community and he'd be the oldest I guy there by like Jim, 10 years, I right? Jim does thrive on the fact that he can hang around like much younger people than him. And he, he either might feel younger himself or I think he like, it's easy for him to improve. Oh, hey there. Hey there, sweetie squat. You want to come into Uncle Jimmy's van and maybe get some popsicles? Do you like popsicles, little boy? But uh, it's going to get good. Trust me. I've got some lore following this one you guys are going to like. Press younger people, you know, like young kids, young boys, teenagers, whatever. They'll be impressed by him. They'll think he's really cool. And, you know, he'll his ego might feed on that quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think that's really what, like one of the big reasons that he uh, one that he takes off and two that, that he doesn't really hang out with people his age. You know, and I think it's because like, like Jim would be what, 40 now? He is going, he is pushing 40. 40. Yeah. <laughs> and it's still a situation <laughs> where you know, he's, he's probably he's dating somebody who's half, who's half his age. Cause I think Jade is like what, 23 or 25 or something. Like she's, she's quite young. I know I'm a terrible man. I'm fucking a young Asian female. What am I doing? I need to get a fat old wife. Um, and he's still hanging out with people that are way younger than him. And, and will, what does that say about you when you're 40 and you're like, th there's been this thing floating around for a while now that, that Jim is the guy who never left high school. He's like the 22 year old who goes back to high school and like hangs out with the kids out, out back behind the school. And that really does sound like it's the case. Only he's 40. <laughs> it's geez. Like, you, I don't know. Like he, he does blow up every, every time he makes a new channel, but he blows up amongst people who are quite young. And then you have to think, well, what does that say? Well, I mean, to me, that says he's uh, he's definitely not weird. He's definitely not grooming them because that's that's exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like a 30 year old man grooming a bunch of kids to be part of his cool kids club for his own ego. And, and again, don't take that. Don't take my word for that. Let's uh, let's let's talk to the person who was part of his his little uh, his little grooming operation. We're going to go deep into the, the grooming operation. I hope you're ready, chat. From what I remember, he was never like that active in any of the stuff. The most he did on Medicare was a, a video series parodying like YouTube bloggers at the time. Oh, 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 God, yeah, that was definitely the atmosphere in Medicare was that we thought we were like really elite, you know, super, super users on the Internet. We were on the cutting edge of, of trolling as an art form. <laughs> were, were you actually? <laughs> Uh, no, not at all. I mean, we did some shit. Um, <laughs> if people, if people know, like, uh, school. Sh Wait a minute. I'm so super confused. Did a former member of Medicar just say that they weren't on the cutting edge of trolling and that it was just kind of a fuck around thing? Because I could have sworn that Sargon just read us a 32 lo uh, page long post about how the juggalo Lord of Darkness rained fire down upon the innocent people of the earth. That's confusing. Yeah, and for Always reference for anybody in the chat, when I say Medicare, I'm not talking about Jim, I'm talking about the forum. Shooter, Shooter North American Tour 2012? That, 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 that was a project, project that we did. did. That, that was, was um, a, a school, school shooting, shooting source, source mod. mod. <laughs> that, that. I've never heard of it, but it sounds awesome. <laughs> I'd definitely play it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, just to... He wouldn't play it. It doesn't have anything to do with raising another dinosaur's children. Uh, just to be clear, and I, again, this keeps coming up, so I'm just gonna, I gotta skip to the timestamps, sorry. Uh, we're not gonna be talking about Jim himself. Medicare is the name of a forum that he was on, and I was on as well for a while. And he took the name of that forum, I presume, to, to even to this day, to annoy the uh, old owner of that forum. That was Haberman, right? Haberman, yes. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. I know this is a pain. Yeah. Just a yeah, bit, yeah, eh? Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Okay, let me just, I, I gotta present everyone again. Um, let's, let's, let's keep going over it, though, here. I'm gonna get the chat room up back up. I lost it. Okay. But to be fair, um, when you get down a little bit, he does, you know, uh, make up some really yeah, we'll, we'll things. Be into that. Until... <laughs> we'll be getting to that in a minute. Okay. His justification for this is, of course, security, but let's all be realistic about this. There is no security on the internet, merely the illusion of security. You can try your best to erase things. You may even succeed, as he, as he has in removing large portions of his past, but, but be assured that somewhere out there, someone has taken the time to catalog these things, should the need ever arise to use them. Now, he's basically talking about you, Latin. <laughs> um, <laughs> not really, but... <laughs> I know, but it turns out that you had all this stuff saved. I, yeah, yeah, I, I guess. <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of lost here. I don't know exactly what uh, track we're on, but hopefully get to the grooming part. Hopefully that's coming up because that's the hotness. Well, sorry, just, just to roll back a little bit. Was the dynamic always that he was really the oldest person in most of these groups? Like, yes. were most of these groups teenagers? Yes, definitely. He was. 
So, I think we've established exactly the way that my good friend Jim works. He he finds a group of young kids and then encourages them to join him on his on his escapades. Well, sorry, just just to roll back a little bit. Was the dynamic always that he was really the oldest person in most of these groups? Like yes. were most of these groups teenagers? Yes, definitely. He was absolutely the oldest person on Medicare. I, I'm very certain he was older than Haberman. He was definitely... Oh, wait, no. He wasn't the oldest person on bullshit forums. There was also another British guy who was uh, in his late 20s there. And again, I, I'm going to call this grooming because that's exactly what it is when a guy... <laughs> when a guy who's nearly 30 goes to a bunch of kids that are 14 and encourages them to do things. It's really fucking creepy. He never did anything like particularly malicious or horrible. He was just kind of on the sidelines. Hey, all I've got to say is kids love lollipops. All right, I'm not the bad guy here. But let's let's talk about these, these accusations that I'm uh, uh, running a grooming circle on these forums. Now, a lot of man talks about bullshit forums and he talks about Medicare. But one of the things he's, again, conveniently forgetting as he explains his story, and this is something you can all look into if you'd like to. There's a Scottish gentleman, a very rich Scottish gentleman, who happened to love video game reviewers back in the early days of YouTube. Names like Armic21, Urinating Tree. He wanted to create a forum for them to come hang out on. And so he did. Uh, he created Axel Stripe. Now, Axel Stripe attracted a bunch of the really early video game reviewers and Let's Players, like back in 08 and 09 and 07, really, really early on. And I joined as part of that community. A lot of people did, because I, I used to watch Armic 21. I watched a couple of other guys, so I signed up. So the forum does fairly well for like a year or two. But the personalities start to clash. These different uh, YouTubers, even back then, started to clash over who was the, the bigger deal. Lots of fighting going on on the mod boards and the admin boards. Until eventually, it implodes. The guy that you know opened the forum up can't control it anymore. None of the personalities want to stick around anymore. And he shut it down. Forum gets shut down. Now, the community that you know had built up around it decided they were going to go build two different forums. One of them was the bullshit forums. And the other was something like, I don't know what the fuck it was called. It was like hot use or some shit like that. But um, but yeah, so we started a new forum called Common Ground Forums, which was basically Medicare and bullshit forums, like a lighter version of those kind of combined. I and, do have um, the Common Grounds folder, but in the Medicare folder, there's still the Enclave saga. Now, did that yeah, did, no, did did Enclave that's... happen between or... Yeah, this happened chronologically. That happened after Common Ground forums. Like, I didn't arrange that folder very well. Okay, okay. But so um, I'll, I'll go to Common Ground next. Tomba Hat just is saying that the Enclave saga was say, staged. Is that yes, it was, it, it, it was staged, staged, but that's the point. Yep. Yeah. A really massive blog post that should be in that uh, folder that I gave you with like a fake chat log and everything. So, what he's, when he's talking about bullshit forums in the user base there, what he's failing to mention is that they were all refugees from this other forum that basically blew up. And that forum was comprised of pretty much people of all age demographics. You know, one of the things Sargon's trying to allude here is that uh, my audience is young, that I'm training my boys at a young age. Well, I went into YouTube analytics. Maybe Sargon's right. Maybe I'm like PewDiePie, but more nefarious. So let's take a look at my uh, age demographics on my YouTube page. Let, let's see what it says. How many, how many toddlers have I taught to troll people on the internet? Well, I mean, we've got 18 to 24 at 35%, and uh, 25 to 34 at 43%, 35 to 44 at 12%. But that 13 to 17 age demographic, that's only 2% of my audience. I don't understand. I thought I had an army of loyal, trolling 12-year-olds working for me. I've got almost as many 65s and over as I do 13 to 17-year-olds. <laughs> I don't know what more to say. I think Sargon might actually be mentally handicapped. He's kind of fucking stupid. Sargon of Akkad is a bit of a dum-dum. You know, when Richard Spencer said, Sar well, at least, let me quote him directly, Surgan, you, you have a conception of your intellectual abilities that are greater than reality. I thought that was a funny meme. 
You know, it was, it was a good little bit of banter, a good little bit of joking around. But at this point, I don't think it's a meme anymore. I think Sargon is legitimately mentally handicapped. He, he probably rode the short bus to school. And I guess that short bus didn't have enough fuel to get his ass to college, and that's why he dropped out. Now, I'm not saying that we should pick on him because he's a retard. I'm just saying that we shouldn't anger him because tard strength is a sight to behold. But let's go back to the story. And, uh, I mean, we even have footage of Jim doing his stuff. Let's, let's have a quick listen to this. This is, this is surely not complete cringe. Is Sargon being disingenuous? Place your bets. Here we go, folks. It's the recruitment seminar. Oh, you're either 17 or 18. You know, no, but you're one of those two, right? You're male, mm -hmm. American. You yeah. have uh, a boyfriend. The boyfriend is yes. 14 years old, uh, four roughly four feet high. Four okay, and four and a half. half. Okay, uh, seven inch dick. That's what I remember. Uh, he's Asian. Yeah. And you say you're not gay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're, I told you, yeah, pansexual. Okay. 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 Uh, your boyfriend is currently in school right now. Yes, no. Yes or no? Should be. It's 248. Compelling audio, oh, right, I know. Right. But the good part's coming up. Okay, okay. Get out told. Are you? Were you texting him just now? Uh, are you on Skype on your cell phone right now? Uh, so you, we we okay. You, you say you don't know what kind of phone your boyfriend has. So you're not okay. So you're not sure if his phone could support Skype. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. And uh, yeah, I don't know where to go. Uh, your boyfriend's oh, yeah, name? Yeah, yeah. Yes, no. Yeah. I recognize that voice. That's the voice of a groomer. That's some stranger danger chat. <laughs> you need to be safe. He might spill the paint on you and take you into his woodshed. Okay, so I want to summarize now. You're dating a guy named Koji. He's about 14 years old. He's about four to seven plus inch dick. And that that's about right. Mm -hmm. You two live in different states. Okay. And you, as you, you're not gay, but you're dating him. But nobody in your family knows. Yeah. Nobody in his family knows. It's random. Okay, that's uh, that's a pretty poor quality recording, but it does come from 2011. Or I guess Jim would be, what, 31 at that point? Interrogating a 17-year-old about his 14-year-old boyfriend? I'm yeah, geez, Sergen. It makes you think, why would Jim be talking to this guy about dating an underage boy across state lines? Maybe, maybe it's because we had a, a sneaking suspicion that our 17-year-old was actually 19 years old. And that he was bragging about having nude pics of uh, underage boys on his fucking cell phone. And maybe the reason the call is recorded, you unbelievably dumb motherfucker, is because we were going to fuck with him, get it on as evidence, and then send it to his fucking family. I don't know. That's a possibility. That's just a, a possibility, Sergen. Are they gay? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying this is exactly the pattern of a groomer, but this is exactly the pattern of a groomer. In fact, it's, it's really weird. It actually really reminds me of Pinocchio. <laughs> and you might be thinking, what? That's such a fucking strange thing to say, but you know what I mean? Uh, it's like, it's kind of true. Oh, Grandpa took out some of his animations. I, I'm going to mute it because I don't want to get some kind of a claim from whatever art house this is from, Disney or fucking Warner or whatever. We'll just let it play out as I talk to chat for a minute. How, how are you liking this? I'm, I'm getting lit the fuck up here, guys. I don't, how am I ever going to recover? Oh, oh, he's back. I was like, wow, that's, that's fucking weird. That is so weird. And he hangs out in a group that's full of paranoia and lies. And he grooms these young lads to go and troll people on the internet for his amusement and ego. Okay, wow, I mean... No wonder he's afraid of being doxxed. I mean, Jesus Christ, imagine if you were doxxed and you had your name attached to this behavior forever because you did this for years until the groups you're part of implode under their own disgusting weight. Yeah, imagine that. Here's another possibility. Imagine, if you will, you are somebody that decides to do a video on a known troll. And you decide to look into the known troll and look into the troll forums. Imagine finding out that they actually troll and they might actually troll each other. But what's worse, imagine having 
the source. Uh, that was uh, that's a, a, another audio recording of uh, me and Jim fucking with a kid from Common Ground Forums who was talking about how he's not gay, but he has a 13 year old boyfriend. Well, shit, I'm running downstairs to throw a pizza in the oven. Have him recap his story so it's on record. Well, I'm, I'll be all right. All right. So let, let's get everything up to record. Uh, it's not a you are 17 or maybe 18, right? Asexuality is where you have no sexual drive, basically. All right. You know what? Fine. Fine. OK, whatever. OK. I said I was attracted to him for him. Or, or no, you know what? Whatever. Not. Okay, whatever. whatever. Okay, whatever. Okay. I don't care. Earphones. I don't care. You're trying to convince me about something that I. You can't. Hold on a second. If you don't care, then why do you want to have everything recorded? And why do you keep trying to make me repeat? That's everything? no business of yours. And just answer no. yes, no. Okay, you're not gay. All right. Uh, you have a 14 year old Asian boyfriend with a seven inch dick. Oh, you guys really have been paying. Oh yes, you've been paying attention. But uh, yes or no. Yes, I've been yes or no is not it. Do you have an Asian boyfriend, 14 years old, uh, four inches high with a seven inch dick? Ultimately, he just says yeah. yes to what I'm asking him. Um, like this, I'm, I'm just, I'm just having a good fucking laugh. <laughs> that, that, that was, that, to be fair, that was very funny. And just going to prove that you know, Jim, and that, that is some top tier trolling. <laughs> <laughs> That's gold. We have to upload that somewhere. That's amazing. <laughs> Okay, it'll, it'll 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 be it'll be uploaded. Okay, you just cherry picked what you wanted to hear. I I'm just saying that I I that would be pretty bad, and you know you especially as a as a near forty year old man that all coming out that would be that would be weird. That would be weird and disgusting. But um, it's the dishonesty I'm concerned with. But um, it's the dishonesty I'm concerned with. But um. It's the dishonesty I'm concerned with. So Sargon is concerned with dishonesty, and he's presenting audio from a troll forum, from a troll, about trolls trolling trolls. But even beyond the whole troll thing, the conversation was about a four-foot, 14-year-old with a seven-inch dick. Let that... Sink in for a moment. But, um, it's the dishonesty I'm concerned with. The dishonesty... That's what bothers him. It's the dishonesty. It's the dishonesty. Not the allegations I'm a child groomer, running a mercenary army of children trolls on the internet. It's like my own outer heaven. My own digital outer heaven. Sargon of a cod things. I'm Big Boss. He thinks I'm Big Boss on the internet. And I have an army of mercenary children wreaking havoc on web forums from here to hell and back. It really bothers me because my friend Jim is sick. And by the way, before I start this, the reason that I played a, a copyrighted song at the beginning of this stream and the reason that the chat isn't on is so I can't make any money out of this. You can't, I can't monetize it. Any money that is made, if it was monetized, would go to whoever owns the copyright of the song. And you can't send a super chat to me. So you know that I'm not doing this for the cash. Not doing it for the cash. Do tell me, Sargon. An hour long stream scheduled two days ahead and super chat enabled. 48 hours for people to chat and give super chats. For a one-hour stream, tell me again how you didn't make any money of this. What happened when I posted this is there was a fucking meltdown. So you know that I'm not doing this for cash. But because I really, I really want you to donate your super chance to my friend Jim because he's sick. I agree. You should give me your money. Wait, how about donating to a smaller YouTuber that is sick and has a disability? Even just 1% of either Jim or Sargon's fucking Patreon, and I'll be set for the fucking year. I think Sargon's a smart cookie. He's using that big brain again. Now, I know he's, he's a big fan of Rules for Radicals, and I'm sure this motherfucker reads Sun Tzu every time he goes to bed at night. And this master of reverse psychology totally isn't trying to, uh, to not let me... Uh, you know, keep super chat enabled. Don't want to shame me on that. Uh, I, I don't really give a fuck, Sergen. Um, I've got 26,000 people watching and I'm making a ton of money showing everybody what a fucking retarded asshole you are. <laughs> Let the money roll in. Let the viewers increase. Let's continue. 
really sick. Really seriously sick. There's something wrong with him. I mean, it's not so wrong that he can't spend hours and hours and hours and hours every day laughing at people on the streams. But he is, he's definitely super sick. I mean, listen to this. Sorry about the recent delays with videos. I had said when I started my Patreon that if I couldn't keep up with it, I would, I would close it down and I may be reaching that point soon. I don't usually go into personal details, but my health isn't the best. And lately it's been on the downturn. And you can definitely hear it in the joy with which he approaches everything on a stream. You can tell that this man is deeply, deeply unwell. Wait a minute, Sargon. Aren't you talking about shit that happened in a trolling forum ten years ago? Why are you trying to link the army of children with a post from his Patreon this year in February? Well, he is right. I am experiencing massive levels of joy specifically right now. Sargon is like a, he's like an alabaster potion. He's a magical cure-all for any ailment that uh, could affect you. We need to bottle your little doughboy ass up and sell you to sick people, Sargon. Egos. Everybody has them. There's an overabundance of egos out there. In fact, if it were a commodity, nobody would buy it, nobody would sell it, and nobody would trade it. Because it's pervasive. It is everywhere. And because it's everywhere, it is utterly worthless. Now, when we examine the internet, what we see is not just egos. We see egos amplified to incredible heights. We see people who become so self-centered and so full of themselves that they believe they are above us. And now, why is that? How do they get to that point? How do they get an ego so large that they believe they're better than us? Well, because of us. It's our fault. We have created monsters on the internet. We've created monsters on the internet by five-starring videos. We have created monsters on the internet by commenting, by favoriting, by subscribing. Now, I'm not saying that you can't be a fan of something. There's nothing wrong with being a fan of something. But what I want to discuss in this video is one of the things that is killing the internet. It is egos. Egos of content creators. Now I want you to sit back and think of this. Think of how many times you've personally seen this. You go to somebody's page. Let's take YouTube, for example, because it is the mecca of fucking egos on the internet. Let's say you go to a YouTube page, and it's a popular person. They have thousands of subscribers. And you're looking through their page, and they've got their videos, and they've got everything else, and then you look over at the description and you see something a little awkward. In that description they have something along the lines of this. Don't tell me what to make. Don't request anything. I won't sub to you. Don't send me a friend request. Don't comment about this on my page. If you're going to comment about this on my video, make sure it's about this. Don't ask me the music I use. Don't ask me the editing software I use. Don't ask me this. Don't ask me that. Don't ask me that. They set all these hoops up for you to jump through. Because don't you dare, I mean, don't you ever dare to offer criticism or feedback. We have let these people become self-centered because we feed their ego. I have a better idea later this week and on the future of this and videos altogether. Depending on how things go, I might be closing up shop. If I do, I'll be shutting down the Patreon, though I'll leave the channel up so you can watch the videos that are already there. Again, not sure how this will all turn out, but I figured I'd give you all a heads up in the meantime. Thanks for the support while this Patreon has been active I've been and while I've been making videos. It's definitely helped. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that it's definitely helped. And I'm glad that I can truly believe that this is real and not a complete lie and not a way of milking money out of the children that you've been grooming on the internet <laughs> using their parents' credit cards. <laughs> Smugly chuckles. Well, I know, it's terrible of me as a content creator that's running a Patreon to update that Patreon and say, hey, maybe I'm, you know, getting to the point of being too sick to continue this. So if the Patreon disappears tomorrow, thanks for the support. I mean, keeping the people that are paying you money updated on what you're doing is a completely super troll thing to do. We learned that at troll school. Haberman, the juggalo lord of the 24-hour ops, taught me this firsthand. He said, Jim... Be responsible to the people that pay you money. That's how you get them. You get them good, buddy. You troll the shit out of them by updating them and trying to be consistent with them. Fucking blown the fuck out. Oh, how am I going to recover? So, <laughs> you know, and, and think of how ballsy these fuckers are. All right. They will sit there and they'll say, donate money to me. I need money. Uh, five star my videos. Subscribe. Comment. Favorite all my stuff. And then once you've done that, once you become a statistic to them, once you become part of that base that builds up this ego for them, they turn around and say, fuck you. Fuck you, you're not important. Fuck you, I'm not going to have a dialogue with you. Fuck you, I'm not going to interact with you. 
You are beneath me. You are not equal to me in any way, and I don't have to respond to you for any reason whatsoever. Now, <laughs> they've got people on the, you know, especially on YouTube, people on YouTube have gotten away with this shit for far too fucking long. Far too long. Because we allow them to get away with it. We allow them to get to this, this level of egotism, of self-centeredness. We allow them to reach this point where they think they're so good that we don't matter anymore. And, you know, God forbid that you finally do, you know, break free of that, you know, mind control, that cult mentality, and, you know, say, wow, this, I disagree with this, or, you know, you could have done this better. Because what's going to happen? You are going to get flamed to hell and back. And how, why are you going to get flamed to hell and back? Because there are two types of fans on the Internet. There is the fan who can take it or leave it. They might be a fan of something, they might be subscribed to it, and they'll watch the videos, and they'll like them, and they'll think, oh, that's artsy, or, you know, funny, or whatever the fuck it is that attracted to them in the first place. And then, for whatever reason, if they just stop liking it, they'll walk away. You know, it's a buffet to them. They sample a little bit here, they sample a little bit there, and they're done. On the other hand, are the fanboys. Now, the fanboys I feel sorry for, because not only are they the cause of the problem, they are what perpetuates it. They have allowed, you know, they've built into building up this ego. They have helped to make this person who they are, this egocentric asshole. So I hope that uh, I hope that my good friend Jim is uh, Jim is doing something they call quote unquote stream sniping. Now I'd never heard this term before before my good buddy Jim said it, but apparently it's because of the numbers. Apparently it's because this this is a way of doing real time damage control and making sure that you can say, oh look at my numbers, they're bigger than yours, and I'm I'm very glad that they are, Jim. This is killing the internet. We've allowed these fuckers to get out of control, absolutely out of control. They get these subs, they get these favorites, and they literally measure their self-worth by it. I mean, think of how pathetic that is. Think of how pathetic it is to measure your self-worth by your view count, by your star count, by your sub count. I mean, what kind of life are you leading where that is what you measure your worth by? It's not the deeds you did or the people you know or the things you've done in life, but YouTube, of all fucking things, is how you measure your worth? That's fucking pathetic. And I, I see this everywhere, and it just drives me nuts. It drives me nuts because they have this sense, you know, it's this entitlement that they think they're owed. They think they really are owed this, that we should submit, that we should bow down and recognize their genius, and they will go on rants and tirades about shit. They will blame us for drama. They will blame us for drama, of all fucking things. We didn't start the drama, motherfucker. You did. You did by getting out of control. Me telling you that you're out of control is not the drama. You throwing a fit and sicking your fanboys on me, that's the fucking drama. You're the cause of the drama, motherfucker. Not me. Not people like me, not other people on the internet who disagree with your bullshit. You are the cause of it. They are bigger, Surgan. I'm sitting at 26,000. Maybe I'll take a picture of it and send it to you through the mail so you can frame it and put it on your fucking wall so you know what successful streaming looks like. That way you don't have to imagine. You don't have to take up any space in your big brain thinking tank. You can focus solely on saving the political world in the EU, just like you stopped Article 11 and 13. People come down on troll saying they're fucking horrible. I mean, some of them are. Some are just dicks to be dicks, which is humorous. But a majority of trolls, I think, are the ones who are really tuned into this. They've actually seen through the bullshit. They've seen these people get out of control, and they've decided to knock them down a few pegs. And they, you know, they do it in different ways. But they take shots at him. They take shots at him to chip away at that super ego and to drop him down to the nor you know to the level of a normal person. And of course, they you know that starts all sorts of shit. That's more drama on the internet. I love that people throw that word around like it means something. Drama. So what? So it's drama. Deal with it, motherfucker. It's the internet. And this is the internet. The internet is founded on one fucking principle and one principle alone. I can. Do you like that? I like that. I love that. Why'd you do it? Because I can. Why'd you download those ROMs? Because I can. Why'd you get that illegal music? Because I can. Why'd you hack that account? Because I can. Because I can, motherfucker. It's the internet. Deal with it. Give me this shit about drama. You know, and don't you dare attack me. You're just starting drama. Like it's some kind of shield. They raise this up like it's a shield to protect their ego. You know, oh shit, pull the drama shield out. Somebody's telling me I'm an asshole. I mean, if I would not want to steal the numbers of a man so desperately sick. I mean, I don't want to point out that you're actually putting me at the top of a pyramid with me, then you, and then anyone- Impossible. There's no crane on earth that could lift this fat fuck high enough to sit him on top of a pyramid. He would crush it under his own ego. The weight of that thing would destroy the pyramid. 
anyone who's watching you and then anyone who happens to be streaming or making content about this afterwards. I'm just saying you've kind of created a hierarchy by doing this and you've, you've made me the head of it. It's weird. Weird thing to do. There are some people on YouTube who I know who have subscribers over 10,000 people, 15,000, 20,000, who intentionally, really think about this, they intentionally rob their, you know, their fans, their subscribers. They lie to them to get money. They will make up sob stories and bullshit stories, and I actually have proof, you know, fucking proof of this. And they rob their fans. And they'll actually say shit like, they're so fucking stupid, I just don't give a shit. I just want to get money. They'll fucking give me what I want. And these dumb motherfuckers don't realize it. These fanboys, these rabid idiots, don't realize that they're nothing but a jackpot to most people on YouTube. They're either paying them money or they're feeding their ego. So this motherfucker's getting what he needs. What are you getting out of it? You're getting a couple videos on a, what, a Sonic review? Or a couple videos on a, you know, a rant you like? Or, you know, maybe a, you know, a high-pitched little fucker running around with a million subscribers talking like he's a five-year-old who's been whored out by the uh, Google god? But anyway... So, the reason that I posted this, and you, you're going to find this funny, right? Because <laughs> I didn't mean for any of this to work out the way it has. I didn't expect any of this to go like it did, right? I thought that I'd be able to do a stream on the hotel Wi-Fi I was on. And as I was in France at the time, I don't know why, but it was screwing around with YouTube's Go Live Now. So I, I Oh, see, that explains it. I was trying to figure out why Sargon was being a giant pussy and running away. I guess some of the French rubbed off on him. Maybe the next picture we see of him won't be him holding up an Antifa flag, <laughs> but instead will be a white flag, because he learned about it in Paris. I just, like, it wouldn't, I thought I'd put it in advance of the current time that I was in France, but it wasn't working, so I had to put it, like, two days in advance. <laughs> I can't make any money out of this. You can't, I can't monetize it. Any money that is made, if it was monetized, would go to whoever owns the copyright of the song. And you can't send a super chat to me, so you know that I'm not doing this for the cash. So you know that I'm not doing this for the cash. And so I had to put it like two days in advance, just to get the thing to recognize that the stream was not in the past. And I thought that was fine. But the Wi-Fi I was on wasn't good enough to let me press the start stream. It would always say, please wait while we're preparing your stream. And it just sat there. I was like, oh, shit. Because I just wanted to address some of the points that my good buddy Jim had been constantly making. Because he's been trying to get my attention for a while. A, a long time now, in fact. I have been trying to get his attention for a while. <clears throat> now, the thing you need to know is Sargon doesn't care. Sargon... He's doing big boy important things. He doesn't have time for Jim. Okay? Jim's low on the priority list. Like, you know, Sargon deals with real world shit. It's not like, you know, he has an obsessive compulsive disorder. And I live... What is that term they like to use so much in the skeptic fear? Oh, rent free inside his fucking head. I don't live rent free inside Sargon's head. I mean, where would I get the idea that this guy is fucking obsessed with me? Hello, everyone. Sorry we're an hour late. That was my fault. Pull it. Run that back. Wait a minute. Go right. There, freeze that. Full screen. Okay, freeze that. Tighten up on that wheel. Vector in on that guy by the back wheel. Zoom in right here on this spot. With the right equipment, the image could be enlarged and sharpened. What's that? It's an enhancement program. Can you clear that up any? I don't know. Let's enhance it. Enhance section A6. I enhance the detail and... I think there's enough to enhance. Release it to my screen. I enhance the reflection in her eye. Let's run this through video enhancement. Edgar, can you enhance this? Hang on. I've been working on this reflection. There's someone's reflection. The reflection. There's a reflection of the man's face. The reflection. There's a reflection. Zoom in on the mirror. You can see a reflection. Can you enhance the image from here? Can you enhance him right here? Can you enhance it? Can you enhance it? Can we enhance this? Or can you enhance it? Hold on a second, I'll enhance. Zoom in on the door. Times 10. Zoom. Move in. More. Wait, stop. Stop. Pause it. Rotate us 75 degrees around the vertical, please. Stop. And go back to the part about the door again. No, clearly this man doesn't think about me at all. It's not like that video that's up on the thinkery was from three months ago. And he's had a folder on me for three fucking months. Now, I want everyone to just let that sink in. Sargon has had this folder on Jim for three months. 
three months and he hasn't checked the source material that I used, which he linked. Let that sink in. Three fucking months just waiting to teach me a lesson. That's clearly not what's going on here. Because that would be kind of fucking insane, wouldn't it? Surgen might be a little bit insane. So let's get back to the video. He, I mean, I don't even know how many hours of content about me that he's contributed to via, I don't know, live streams, presumably on his own channel and on the, uh, the Big Man Ralph's channel, because I don't watch any of their videos. <laughs> I'm not subscribed to any of their channels. He might be telling the truth. Maybe in his uh, gym folder, there were no videos. Maybe they're just pictures he stares longingly at, imagining us kissing. Don't worry, I'll get to that in a bit because they don't make content that I find interesting. Now, I'm not throwing shade on the drama community, you know, I mean, I, 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 actually, I actually have quite a lot of respect for Keemstar recently because he's actually been operating in good faith, or at least he had when I, when I was back on Twitter, and with regards to me and with regards to public events that have been happening. His input was actually really valuable. So it's, you know, and, uh, you know, if people want to run drama channels, I'm not against that. And I understand why they do it. The views are amazing. You know, the, I mean, let me translate this into real talk for everybody. So we can cut through the shit of Surgen's speech. Uh, he knows Keemstar is probably watching this and has been paying attention to this little back and forth. And he's scared shitless to say anything bad about him. So <laughs> I'm just clearing that up. It's a little bit of dick sucking going on to try to prevent uh, Keemstar from ever talking about this publicly. Keem's got millions of subscribers. You know, my good buddy Jim, he gets huge numbers when he's doing his drama streams. So I, I totally understand why people do it. But I don't. You know, I'm not not really interested in getting on with drama. I'm actually trying to do stuff. And I, I mean that in earnest, too. I mean, genuinely. I'm genuinely trying to make things change. So, I mean, I think you're interested in, in getting more involved with the party politics, right? Since you're now a member, or at least are in the not process really, of being better. Really interested in any kind of party politics. Then why did you join the party? <clears throat> so I have something to support. You don't have to join a party to support it. You can just like vote and go to the sidelines, but you specifically decide... Do you decide think I should to tell thousands of people not to join UKIP? Well, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, is that if you want to be involved in the internals of the party politics, you become a member. If you want to vote for them, you go to the ballot box and you vote. Yeah, but I want, I want to declare my colours. I'm not interested in getting involved in internal, part, internal party politics. Well, you could have just said, well, I support UKIP and just not join then. I mean, it sends a different message. I, I mean that in earnest, too. I mean, genuinely, I'm genuinely trying to make things change. So I'm not, I'm not really interested in the, the, in the internal politics, but I, I am interested in being able to say, no, I'm a member of UKIP, and therefore, as in, when I'm arguing with a, an SJW or a lefty or a socialist or something like that, I mean, they're all members of, of Labour. Why the fuck wouldn't we become members of a different party? Well, I mean, why didn't you just do that before with, like, another party? It's, it's interesting you're doing it now, especially considering, at the moment, we've got, like, a massive ideological diversity, and we're only really united by pushing Brexit through. Not really interested in getting on with drama. I'm actually trying to do stuff. I, 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 you see my concern here? I think I'm, I think I'm making myself clear, right? I think Not really. I, th I think... Um I think what you're doing is trying to gatekeep your own ideological interests rather than the actual points of policy that really matter. Well, if I did that, then why wouldn't I be discouraging other members of the party from joining? Well, I mean, you I've been to your meetups. I've talked to you before, and I've seen the sorts of people that are there, and I don't think they're particularly serious. I think they're very serious. <laughs> well, I, I have to disagree having seen them myself. I think this is another point okay. we're going to have to agree to disagree on. I, I get the impression that a lot of the people who showed up to the Uzulu meetup, because I was there, were kind of half assing it, and that's not what we want. And I got a lot of impressions that I, that I don't think I was too keen on. I don't think that they would be beneficial. See, what I'm, what I'm hearing from this is that you're not interested in UKIP succeeding. You're interested <laughs> in UKIP being what you want it to be. That's a funny way of phrasing it, because I think if I wasn't concerned about a level of professionalism within the party members, then I think we would be doomed to fail. I don't think that the Kekistan meme, like, is really going to appeal to, like, people who are collecting their pensions, frankly. And if we're presenting messages that are, frankly, unprofessional, then why would they vote for us? They think we're amateurs. No one wants well, an amateur running in their country. paradigm politics to me. I mean, the, yeah, I, do you not think that I reach more people than you will on a doorstep? 
Um, well, the thing is, is that your audience is mostly worldwide. I think only like 20% of your audience is in this country. And most of them are young people who are proven to have a lower voting. Like they vote less than older people. My, my, my young people don't vote less. <laughs> you know, Do you have any sort of proof for that? And we're not going to win elections on a group of people who aren't going to vote that much. Well, they are going to vote. Let's they, look they at yeah, The idea that you, you think that my politically engaged audience don't vote is hilarious. I'm not saying you're Sargon. 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 Sargon, Sargon, Sargon. Now, I don't doubt that like 3% of your audience does vote. I don't doubt that. However, we want to expand to more than that. We need a much higher rate, and we need it equally spread across, across, of course, constituencies. And a lot of these constituencies have variants in the youth populations. A lot of them obviously change in age. We're going to expect a level of decorum from them. That's my point. Some of them are paying. No, that's how my audience looks by speaking in generalities. They don't look like what you think they look like. Well, I know who showed up to the meet stuff, and I can tell most of them are in their early to mid twenties. Well, uh, what about what? okay? Well, I'll tell you what. Then I, I think we're we're pretty much done on this conversation. Um, I'm not really interested in talking to somebody who doesn't really know what they're talking about regarding my position <laughs> and my audience, and is interested in gatekeeping. I'm not really interested in dealing with gatekeepers, so... That I don't think that the members we will be receiving will necessarily have the same decorum of other groups. What exactly would you want Sargon to do so you would be happy? I'm just curious. Happy, happy. Well, I'd, I'd, need, I'd need things to be more... I'd need to see more seriousness. Because I, I don't see... I don't see that much seriousness. Like I say, I, I think that to a lot of people, this is a game. A lot of people, a lot of it people, I think this is just a fucking game. Who's doing more in-depth stuff than me? I am. Okay, because that, that prevents civil rights violations. That's yeah, but, but, you're, but that's circular, because you're assuming, you're presupposing civil rights. Well, I think that's where we disagree. I appreciate the conversation, but this feels like a massive waste of my time. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I've got things to do. I'm in the middle of recording a video. And likewise, is, uh, likewise, I've got a couple of I've got a couple of meetings to go to, and I've got to I've actually got to meet Gerard on Sunday. So I'm well, I'm, I'm I, sorry I, I couldn't I, help I you. Uh, I, I'm sorry you guys didn't uh, reach an agreement. I, I have to say it's really interesting listening to both of you speak. Yeah, the, the, this just seems like a silly gatekeeping conversation to me. Uh, I, I think I think this is I think this is someone deliberately missing the point and just putting in a load of polemics to try and prove a point to two <laughs> other people. So that's <laughs> right. Okay. As 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 you wish. But um, anyway, thank you, thank you for the conversation. Oh, and, not uh, a problem. Yeah. Not a problem. You too. Best of luck with your channel. Not really interested in getting on with drama. I'm actually trying to do stuff. I, I mean that in earnest, too. I mean, genuinely, I'm genuinely trying to make things change. And so the whole point of my stream was literally just to answer a few questions he had for me that my friend V had sent through. And I can call him my friend because I actually trust him. <laughs> and that's... Well, Sargon, I trust my pets, too. I mean, you train them well enough, and they're going to be pretty loyal. That's the difference, I think, between me and my good buddy Jim, is that the relationships I have are based on mutual trust and good faith, whereas the, the relationships Jim has are based on having something bad on one another. It's a very key difference, and it really, really explains the depth of paranoia within his circles. You know, just to, again, to just clarify, you know, when Sargon's talking about my level of paranoia, just in case anybody missed it, let's play that again. Hello, everyone. Sorry we're an hour late. That was my fault. Pull it. Run that back. Wait a minute. Go right. There, freeze that. Full screen. Okay, freeze that. Tighten up on that wheel. Vector in on that guy by the back wheel. Zoom in right here on this spot. With the right equipment, the image could be enlarged and sharpened. What's that? It's an enhancement program. Can you clear that up any? I don't know. Let's enhance it. Enhance section A6. I enhance the detail and... I think there's enough to enhance. Release it to my screen. I enhance the reflection in her eye. Let's run this through video enhancement. Edgar, can you enhance this? Hang on. I've been working on this reflection. Someone's reflection. A reflection. There's a reflection of the man's face. The reflection. There's a reflection. Zoom in on the mirror. You can see a reflection. 
Can you enhance the image from here? Can you enhance him right here? Can you enhance it? Can you enhance it? Can we enhance this? Or can you enhance it? Hold on a second, I'll enhance. Zoom in on the door. Times 10. Zoom. Move in. More. Wait, stop. Stop. Pause it. Rotate us 75 degrees around the vertical, please. Stop. And go back to the part about the door again. <laughs> clearly, clearly I'm paranoid and insane. Now, some of you out there have said this folder doesn't belong to Sargon. Instead, it belongs to short, fat Otaku. Be that as it may, I would like to ask you, does that change anything? Okay, let's uh, continue with the video. And the lack of paranoia within mine. Anyway, let's answer some of his questions. Now, I'll have to pull up my timestamps again. I don't watch any of their videos. <laughs> these, are, these are very interesting. And very interesting statements to be made, too. So uh, we'll, we'll start at um, him talking about me and my character, which, again, is another funny thing. Again, this is going to be a messy one, so um, you'll have to forgive me. Conversation. I, yeah, I, yeah. I confirmed this to you when you, you asked me about it and said, or not, and I told you everything I laid out in that is exactly what I thought. I, I thought Sargon is not as clean as he wants to come off. I'll just say it openly. I don't think Sargon is as honest or clean as he wants to come off as. I think he's dirty. Um, I think the candid shit, he was dirty. Um, I think that uh, he likes to send out his little capos to do his bidding for him, like Short Fat Otaku and other faggots, because he doesn't want to get his hands dirty. Uh, and I just, I don't trust him. And when I hear him make statements on stream where he says, I'll lie if it's convenient for me. I mean, this is a guy that wants to run for political office, right? He has a political ambition. Well, you know, what, what is he expecting is going to happen when somebody in the press pool comes up and says, so can you comment on the white nick? Oh, uh, you know, geez, I don't want to, you know, um, not provide context. Sargon's been, Sargon's been so good about providing context to all these clips. And I would be remiss if I wasn't a responsible big boy adult like he is. So what's the white nick thing? <laughs> can we find out what the white nick are? What's that about? Let me see if I can find where Sargon might have been talking about those, those goddamn white nicks. See, look, look, this is what I mean about the chat. I just can't be bothered to deal with people who treat me like this. It's, it's really annoying. Like, I, you are acting like a bunch of nicks, just so you know. You, you act like white nicks. Exactly how you describe black people acting is the impression I get dealing with the alt-right. I'm really, I'm just not in the mood to deal with this kind of disrespect. And I know it sounds like, oh my God, he's demanding respect. But yeah, to be honest with you, do you not think that like, we should have a level of decorum in interpersonal interactions? We're going to expect a level of decorum from them. We should have a level of decorum in interpersonal interactions. That I don't think that the members we will be receiving will necessarily have the same decorum of other groups. We should have a level of decorum in interpersonal interactions. And it's a little, little, the internet is bullying me. I'm not saying you're bullying me. I'm saying there's just no point dealing with this kind of attitude. Is it? Like, I, I know it's called trolling, but it's not like something I need to deal with if I don't want to have to deal with it. Upper class twat. Dude, I'm not an upper class twat. I come from fucking the most working class roots. At least my parents do. It, it, Jesus Christ. It's just like... You understand that I'm a person, don't you? You, know, you? you guys understand that I am a person. And look, yeah, yeah, like, sorry, Nisar Keeson, how dare I hurt your sensitive feelings? Look, you carry on, but don't expect me to then have a debate with one of your faggots. Then why would I bother? <laughs> like, why would I bother? <laughs> you act like enough class time now. Maybe you're just acting like a n****. Have you considered that? Do you think white people act like this? White people are meant to be polite and respectful to one another? And you guys can't even act like white people is really like amazing to me. Why would he bother? You know, Sergen, he's a real human being. Okay, he's got he's got feelings, and he doesn't have time for those for those. I can't say the word. I'm just too politically correct. But our politician, our future politician, he's not afraid to break those barriers. I think maybe one of the planks in UKIP's future platform is they've got to do something about all those goddamn white nicks. But I just wanted to provide a little context. Uh, can you comment <laughs> on saying 
Can you comment on saying that uh, you'll lie when it's convenient for you? Or here's a better one, V. Um, we know that you have an association with a, a YouTuber by the name of Matt Jarbo. Well, recently information came out that Matt Jarbo may or may not have allegedly tried to rape a teenage girl behind a church at knife point. Um, do you disavow that person or do you... I'm sure that when I'm when I'm a politician and I'm standing there and running for office, I'm absolutely certain that someone's going to come up from the press pool and say, "Excuse me, can I talk to you about mundane mats, please?" That's I'm definitely sure that's going to happen, and I'm actually ready for that too. I disavow. <laughs> I dis disavow. <laughs> Oh, well, Surgan's the big brained one here. I'm just a I'm a I'm a stupid little pleb. Why would the press when looking at some retard from the internet who's wearing a fucking shirt that says Free Kakistan? Why would the press look up things like white nigger comments and talk about your association with some guy that's uh, been accused of trying to hold a chick up at knife point and attempt to I don't I don't even know if you'd call it rape. I don't know what he to get a smooch from her. Because that's how you hit on the ladies. little pro tip for all you troll kids out there that are part of my Outer Heaven gang. If you want to get the girls to give you a nice kiss on the lips, physical violence works well. At least that's what Monday Matt's taught me. Now, it's funny that everything that Jim is afraid of about me, I've demonstrated is true about him. That's weird, isn't it? That's, that's fucking weird. I mean, I, I never took any money from Candid. I never... I never said that I would lie when it's convenient, but I know someone who will. That's so, so strange. Yeah, he never took any money from Candid. Never took any money from Candid. He was just part of the skeptic Skype groups and their little group chats where they probably talked about the money they were making from it. And then when poor, innocent, harmful opinions was talking about how fucked up it was for these idiots to be supporting an app that was building an AI bot to censor them and everybody else. And they all went after him because the company paid the money to do it. That Sergen, in his infinite wisdom, would decide to uh, pretend he wasn't aware of what was going on, even though he was tweeting about it the entire day, and go on to stream with harmful opinions and tell him that he was just all sorts of Alex Jones crazy. And that, um, you know, it's just an app, bro. Folks, I'm having a chat with harmful opinions about Candid, so you can tell that nobody's really going to care about this, and there won't be any any sort of shit flicking on Twitter after <laughs> the, <laughs> the The whole Candid thing, I don't disagree that Candid's probably a shitty app with people who have shitty intentions and all this sort of thing. Um, that's not That's not the problem so much, though. Holy fuck, everyone is in endorsing this thing. I wonder if there's anything weird that's not being mentioned that people would care about. Oh fuck, people normally get annoyed about bots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Fucking everyone else is endorsing this thing. None of them have mentioned this, none of the people who, you know, share the same kind of audience and have the same kind of concerns mentioned this. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty important, it's pretty key. Um, and then people got, people did get annoyed about that. And uh, obviously it, ups uh, it, it upsets you. Right. Having people say all that stuff. As someone on the outside, it just seems a bit autistic. You know, it's, it seems that people are, are like, I'm, don't worry, I'm not, I'm not saying any of it's invalid. I'm just saying, like, is this something I'm prepared to waste my time on? It's also highly amusing to me, and I'm sure everybody else on the internet, that these absolutely retarded fuck knuckles, that these just dipshits of the highest order built the device that created basically the adpocalypse. If you want to know why YouTube and uh, Twitch are fucked into the dirt, you can thank the skeptics for that. Hey guys, how's it going? Have you heard about the hot new chat app, Candid? Whoa! Isn't it cool? Well, no, it isn't actually. And this isn't a sponsored video. In fact, the way things are now, I wouldn't touch Candid with a 10-foot pole. Who's going to take a critical look at this? Guess that task falls to me. Cause I really didn't like seeing so many of the YouTubers I follow become a sort of shill army for this thing. And now that I've looked at the app, I'd like it even less. If you use Candid, you are being used as a guinea pig in a censorship AI experiment. And there's Sergen leading the charge to put harmful opinions in his fucking place and teach that autistic motherfucker a lesson. You don't screw with the skeptics. They're the big boys of YouTube. But anyway, 
The reason, Jim, that people will go and bat for me while I'm not there is because they're my friends. Joke, you're broke, your love life's to your way. It's like you're always stuck in second gear when it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year. But I'll be there for you. I know that's tough to understand. I know that's really tough. But there's a reason that not one of these people can is you. I know you've tried and you and your friends have tried to turn them against me. And there's a reason they haven't. It's because I haven't done anything to them. I haven't got anything on any of them. I haven't hurt them. I've never I don't publicly disrespect them. I don't do anything wrong to them. Unless their name is Crowd, in which case you conveniently record them so you can throw them under the bus later. But aside from that, nothing. He's done nothing underhanded. But no incentive to hurt me. I don't know why they would, and I don't know why you think they would. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, Jim, but the person you don't trust is yourself. And I'm with good reason, it seems. Anyway, let's go to the next, let's go to the next one. <laughs> so, 6 day. There we go. Of, oh my oh, god, IBS is so terrible, and oh my god, it's so racist, and oh my god, how can well, wasn't you that, uh, that? Wasn't that Karen Strong who made those accusations? Because I don't think uh, Saga, myself, or Short Fat Otaku made the accusations that it's getting people killed. I don't, you know, I'd have to go through Short Fat Otaku's tweets, and I'd have to look through his shit, but I don't know. I don't want to piss off some guy that's got eight times the, <laughs> the level of testosterone in his fucking ovaries, as what I've heard Alice in Prime has going. So, I, you know... Oh, a little bit of background context for that, because I want to be the responsible adult here and kind of get away from my, my grooming mentality. Sargon showing me the light here. Um, Allison Prime was a dude during Gamergate that pretended to be a woman uh, to get sympathy and money. And there's an accusation floating around that short, fat otaku pretended to be camera lady who described themselves as an autistic, mute, disabled lesbian. And talked about how they were, like, super fucking ripped, yo, and had a shit ton of testosterone, and they love slaying pussy. So, that's that's kind of floating out there, so that's what that little joke was about, in case anybody was curious. I can't comment on this. I have no, uh, no say one way or the other, but just context matters. That's a fucking thing I'll have that table for another time. But what I'm but saying let's is... Let's go back to the accusations, because you said that uh, Sargon is willing to lie. I believe the context of the stream... Was that he knows that the kill stream is not out, not the kill stream, sorry, the Kumate is not Kumate, outright. Yeah. yeah, it's not outright. He knows that. Yeah. And the idea was if someone comes up to him and says that the Kumate is outright, will he correct that person? It's not, it's not that he would lie that the Kumate is outright. Would he correct someone that he knows is wrong about the Kumate? Oh, so he, no, no, no. Let me, let me, let me have my little interaction with me. So yeah. He, he's fine with propagating misinformation when it's beneficial to him, when it's politically expedient. So who the fuck's going to elect a guy uh, to office when he basically will tell you openly, it's politically expedient for me not to give you the truth or make sure that you have the truth. Only what serves my purposes. Who the who fuck's going to go, go put, a put a ballot in the box, box for that? Well, let's be honest, Jim. I mean, can you think of a politician you think of as trustworthy and honest? I mean, it seems to me that a lot of people will vote for dishonest politicians. I want you to p carefully pay attention to what this retard just said. Um, I accuse him of lying when it's convenient and omitting the truth when it's beneficial to his political ambitions. And his fucking response is not, I don't do that. It's that oh, all the politicians do it. All, all the politicians are dirty, Jim. What do you expect me to do? But you're being dishonest here, aren't you? Because it doesn't serve me in any way, shape, or form for Tonka and his Kumite to be called all right. That doesn't serve me in any way. What I said to Tonka is that I just wasn't going to waste the time. Because, Jim, they call me all right. And I'm obviously not. 
it's demonstrable that I oppose the alt-right and the alt-right opposes me, and yet they call me it anyway. So my reasoning was, why would I waste the time? But you know what? I apologize to Tom Crum that stream because he pointed out that he actually had done the same to me, even though it was a, even though it was a lost cause, probably. He had defended my reputation. I said, you know what? That's fair, Tonka. And that's how- That's fair, Tonka. Uh, a little background on this. I should have the cl- I should have had the clip ready for this, but I'll, I'll try to give it as best as I can recollect it. You can go look it up and check if it if it matches up. But to, to be honest with you, Tom, I, I've, I've only heard good things about you. That's why I agreed to do this conversation. You've only heard good things about me. Yeah, oh. <laughs> no, I know it's, you, it sounds sounds crazy, doesn't it? But honestly, it's not you that anyone has a problem with, as far as I can tell. At least from the people I talk to who talk about this when it happens. You know, it's it's. You, I've never heard a bad word again. And same with failure, you know, because they think you're alt right, and they'll just be like, "Oh, at least the alt right are attacking the liberalists." Blah blah blah. It's like, okay, well, I don't give a shit. Well, fuck, I'm, but I'm not even white. But you, the SJWs don't care. They're too stupid. No, even that's not. Even, too Why are you dumb? I'm all right. I because there's no point trying to explain to them what you are. Tell them I'm pretty. Tell them I, I'm nice. Tell them, tell them that I, I have a, a, a great I can ass. Say that all day, and they will just. <laughs> They call me all right, man. Come on. Well, I, I agree with you, but like they don't know that. And like your complaint is that everything that you're trying to do, you do not want people to misrepresent what your actual thing is. To the SJWs, yeah. Well, to the mainstream too, I'm sure. Since you're well, bringing yeah, yeah, it yeah, into yeah, the yeah. mainstream, the mainstream is yeah, bad, bad way of putting it. Yeah. But just out of convenience, you're gonna tell everybody I'm all right. Well, I'm afraid so. Yeah, it's it's a pragmatic maneuver. It's just too much time to try and explain to people That's what so this is. That's so fucking dirty. Too much work. It's not that much work. Well, I, I you want to tell me that it's too much work for you to do that? Are yeah. you sure? It's too much yeah, work it, it really for you is, to yeah. go through the labor of doing that. Well, yeah, because I mean they don't really know what you guys are anyway. Okay. So. I I was uh, I was really hoping. I was really hoping that at least you would be like, it's, I, I wouldn't do that. Do you know why I was saying that I hope that you wouldn't do that? There's a real reason why. There why is really that? is. But I, I'm going to invite Failure in here to play a three-minute clip. It's from, it's from a Toad McKinley video. And it's going to explain to you why I'm going to be honest, Sargon. You really kind you kind of cut me deep here today. Hmm. Earlier, you did say you were under the impression not very many important things happen on these shows. And maybe to some yeah, people, that's yeah. fair. And maybe to you, that is still true. Well, let, let me just qualify that for a second. Because go the ahead. thing is, it's not... No, no, hang on. Let me qualify. Because no, I'm not saying that... So, no, no, listen, listen. Yeah. I'm not saying that something important couldn't happen here. Because there's a fuckload of energy here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. Thanks, Bill identity extremism like he does for the better part of an hour one of the earliest instances of this Emma fucking Hulk's guy <laughs> took place Pascal, yeah. can i level with you i, I yeah, want to sure. i want to level with everybody here actually it's, it's been long enough and we're like an hour or so into the stream do you know why i think you're so gross you want me to tell you why yeah go I have for no it. problem doing it see because you have no problem calling me a nazi sympathizer because i don't run around in glad hand dumb shit you say on twitter and the goofy shit you said in your video meanwhile you're calling someone a nazi sympathizer who the other day had to go and pick up his 80 something year old fucking grandmother from the fucking hospital because some blm guys thought it would be cool to break half of her face and knock half her fucking teeth out just because she's an old white lady have you made any videos on anything like that no, I haven't made any no, video. Haven't, but I'm a Nazi sympathizer because I'm not jumping up and down and giving you a fucking hand job for your for your dumb fucking opinion, right? Oh shit, son! By the way, I'm not a white guy either. So are you even allowed to fucking disagree with me, or should you be over here sucking my fucking dick? I'm not gonna be sucking your fucking dick. Either. No, you're not. I'm sucking the shit out of you. <laughs> if I ever see you, I'll slap the shit out of you. You're a fucking goof. <laughs> <laughs> the shit you say is goofy. The comparisons you draw are goofy. What you say is fucking goofy. The bullshit you do, that's fanning the flames. The dumb shit you say, that's the goddamn problem. You are the fucking problem, you smug cunt. Yeah. Do you hear me? 
I hear you. Absolutely. Let it bounce around in that hollow fucking skull for a while. Maybe you'll figure out what the real fucking problem is and what fan in the fucking flames looks like. It's in the fucking mirror, you dumb cunt. All right, now, click that real we- quick, failure. That, that was amazing. I recognize that guy from Twitter. Oh, he's such a cunt. Do you know what that was he a response is, yeah. to, Sargon? No, oh, well, uh, your grandmother or something. What? No, 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 that was a response yeah. to somebody who was calling me a Nazi sympathizer because oh, I yeah. didn't say that you were a Nazi, and I, I refuse to give them a bullshit answer like you want to give people about me. I, okay, that's, that's my fine. answer no. to people whenever they you know, came to me and said that you were a fucking Nazi. When they say that you're all right, that's what the fuck I tell people. Uh, that, okay, that's, that's, that's totally I just, fair, I just want to say uh, one thing and then I'll go back to my all right stuff. Uh, the reason that I ended up bringing this guy onto my channel was because uh, Ian Miles Strong gave me a video where he was calling you a Nazi sympathizer and I was arguing with him in the comments. So I decided let's just bring it onto a stream and we argued and Tonka was there and Jeff Holiday, who never gets involved involved with drama you know asked to be involved too and so like we were we took our time to like say no sargon's sargon's definitely not a nazi sympathizer so for you to toss me and tonka under the all right train because you know it, it'll take more than fucking five seconds to just explain no actually it, it's just a morning radio show and they happen to have different we have a variety of things on it's mm-hmm. not just all right the All name right, of that stream, if you're ever interested in it, it's called Taking Up for Sargon or something like that, isn't it, Failure? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I did I, a stream I, where I took up for you because somebody called you and I did a, jumped on a whole stream. Not very long after I'd had quite a ridiculous family crisis happen because mm-hmm. some dipshit was calling me a Nazi sympathizer because I refused to say that you were a Nazi. Because okay, I, well, I refuse I, I'll to I'll do I'll apologize for that now. I'll, I'll apologize to your face for that now. I'm sorry that I misled people into thinking you guys were all right. I'll make sure that if in future I have to talk to you, anyone about you, I'll make sure that I stress that you are not alt-right, even if they can't understand that you are not alt-right. That is fair. That, that's fair. That, I don't think I, I definitely couldn't ask anymore, but I just, I just wanted you to know that you you don't even have to do that. I just no, wanted no, you to because understand. Because you, no, you've got a good point. You've got a good point. I was being blasé because of time constraints and pragmatic reasons. But at the end of the day, it's still you and your reputation that I'm trashing, even if I don't think about the sort of influence I'm wielding, maybe. And it was wrong of me to do. I'm, I'm genuinely sorry. I shouldn't have done it. And thank you for sticking up for me when the time came. I should have done the same. Um, people were accusing Sargon of shit. And at the time, Tonkasa of the Morning Kumite defended him and said, you're wrong, that, that's not true. What you're saying about Sargon is untrue. You shouldn't say it. You should correct yourself. Now, Sargon allowed people to smear Tonka as being all sorts of shit. Oh, you're alt-right, blah, blah, blah. And he didn't care, right? And Tonka essentially shamed him on stream by saying, you know, why is it that I have a, a better moral character than you, Mr. Future Politician, and I'm willing to correct the record but you're willing to let a lie stand because it's politically convenient for you. So that's the background on that. Absolutely true. But you're being dishonest here, aren't you? (laughs) Absolutely true. And so what I am going to do, if someone does come to me and say that Tonka's part of the alt-right and the Kumite's alt-right, I would defend them, even if the journalist isn't going to accept or even understand the terms, because that's really the the main problem with the whole thing that you're trying to reference here, is that the people who you'd be talking to don't know what the fuck we're talking about. No one does. People off of the internet, out of this corner of the internet, they don't know shit. And all I said to Tonka was, I wouldn't bother. <laughs> because okay, I, well, I refuse I, to I'll do I'll apologize for that now. I'll, I'll apologize to your face for that now. I'm sorry that I misled people into thinking you guys were all right. I'll make sure that if in future I have to talk to you, anyone about you, I'll make sure that I stress that you are not alt-right, even if they can't understand that you are not alt-right. <laughs> anyway, what was the what was the next thing? Do I, do I go over the part where Jim doesn't understand the words he's talking about? That seems like a waste. Seems like a waste. I think I'll go to... Let's see. Exciting, isn't it? Let's, let's go... Action let's move on stream. To the stream. I don't want to do this all day, because I still want... This is actually the least important thing I have to do today. The least important thing you've got to do today. And yet you set this stream up two days ahead of time. So let's just let's just skip to the bit where he talks about 
how he was lured into a trap by Louis Levi. <laughs> Fucking got him. That oh, it absolutely, absolutely 100% was. Yes, Louis Levay is a dick sucker of Sargon. Louis Levay is in love with Sargon. Uh, Louis Levay. Okay, let's. The, the, the way this. That's Louis, Louis Levay blown out. <laughs> Louis Levi is friends with Sargon. What a dick sucker. Let me ask the question. Wait, 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 wait. No, I, I'm going to give you my answer first, then you can adjust your question right. if I haven't satisfied it. Yeah, that's how it works. You're, you're going you're gonna to give your answer first, then you'll hear the question. Jim, you're doing this all wrong, mate. Carry on. I do. But I'm not running for political office, am I? And if I was under your tutelage, I guess I would have done it right, huh, champ? I get a I message get a from... Who do, who do I get a message from? Oh, the quartering telling me, hey, Louis LeVay wants you to come onto his stream. That's all I get told. I was like, all right, whatever. I've never really interacted with the quartering. I didn't know much about him at the time. I go onto Louis' stream. Uh, Louis wants to talk to me about why uh, you know, the liberalist stuff and why making jokes about Sargon, because I had posted the Murdoch Murdoch click of Sargon needs more dopamine, which is funny as shit. Uh, and what do I see immediately in the fucking chat is Sargon running his fucking mouth. So here you have Louis LeVay and Quartering, both, you know, uh, admirers and friends of Sargon. And there's Sargon in the chat. And Louis telling me, oh, no, no, it's just I just wanted to have this conversation with you. It just I'm not fucking five years old, V. And this, you know, I know it, like you guys have this habit of running around uh, being like, can you prove it? Can you prove it? Can you give me proof? We're adults. OK, we don't need the shit spelled out in black and white to be able to see what's going on plainly and to fucking interpret the events. Amazing. Amazing. I love the way you think that Louis doesn't have a mind of his own and that I puppeteer him. You know, I advise everyone against interacting with you and dealing with you, and not just you, but just the, the community of which you're a part. I don't puppeteer my capos. I just tell them not to engage you. That's adorable. Seems like a, a bit a mild contradiction. Because it's full of kids and nothing's going to change there. And if you leave yourself, if, if we leave you alone, you're going to self destruct because your community is built on deception. Now, don't you think he would take his own fucking advice? He advises people not to engage with me and then dedicates a stream to me where his boomer ass can't get his fucking audio to work for like 20 goddamn minutes. And where if he had taken five seconds to look up any of the shit that he was talking about, might have found that some of it, maybe all of it, wasn't really accurate. But no, Sargon asks you to do things Sargon himself would never do. Only for you, but not for him. But Louis wanted to do it, and so I said, well, okay, man, yeah, I'm, I can't stop you. You, you go nuts, you know? Uh, but I was going to listen, definitely, because I knew he would blow you the fuck out. And my God, did he ever on that stream? But at first, he was nervous, because, you know, you're a big name intimidating a smaller YouTuber. Wild smiles, you might want to get on that. I know I know that's your threshold. And uh, I was I was frustrated that he wasn't answer, asking the right questions. And so yeah, I was in the chat because I was just a just an audience member and you demanded I come on. And so I did. But anyway, before we move to that one, there was one other thing that I just wanna I just wanna get to because what I'm what I'm basically pointing out here, Jim, is that you don't know what you're talking about at all. Well, I'm I'm not big brained. I'm just uh I'm just one of those plebs. I don't understand the great intellect of Sargon, Sergon of Akkad. Me and Richard Spencer, we're just some dumb motherfuckers. But Sergon is a well-learned individual with his big boy brains. Regarding any of these things, and I can just explain to you actually what's happened, and that's it. And I know you'll sit there and go, ah, but, 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 no. No, Jim. No questions, no answers. This is how it is, because I have no reason to lie to you. Can you imagine the fucking ego on a person to say, don't question me. Don't don't ask me anything. Don't you dare question what I tell you. It has come from me, the the beacon of fucking truth in the world, the infallible Sargon of Akkad, the truth speaker, Carl, the king of honesty. You need to you need to go learn some shit. Uh, before you come play with me, because I only speak pure, unfiltered, delicious, spring-fresh truth.
I'm not part of your lying, doxing, harassing teenage fan club. I'm someone doing something in real life. And it's having measurable results, but we'll get to those in a bit as well. Sargon. 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 Sargon, Sargon, Sargon. So let's get to Jim's impression of politicians. Now, this isn't a first hand impression Jim has formed. Jim has probably never met a politician, let alone been anywhere with any of them and watched them work and operate or anything like that. Jim's assuming what they're like, and he's got a really high opinion of them. Let's go. Yeah, I agree with you with that. But the thing is, you know, you know what's different about the UK compared to the United States? Well, the men are cucks. Well, that, that too. Got him. Got him. Mission accomplished. Somebody hang the fucking banner. Because if you read the news, you'd see that because of uh, fear of being called racist, police allowed over 10,000 girls to get raped by Muslim rape gangs. So maybe people should say more often. Maybe if this is the price for political correctness, if this is the price to uh, not be viewed as racist, uh, then maybe it's not worth it. I'm, I'm not British, V. <laughs> like, but, but we're talking guy. about, yeah, you're, you're talking about a person who does British politics. So, you know, apply to that country. It has a uh, different potential that you can use against your opponent. Yeah, I think the only solution for Europe and a lot of places is violence. I've, I've openly stated that. I, I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> Yeah, I know, because you know you don't want to you don't want to go on record as that smart. See, now if you kept your fucking mouth shut when it came to other things, you'd probably be a lot better off. But yeah, <laughs> I will openly state I think violence is a solution for many of the problems that the world is facing at the moment. <laughs> Big boss confirmed. Now you know what I'm training those army of troll children in outer heaven to do. Well, obviously, violence is always the, the solution of last resort for any problem. Ask the city fathers of Hiroshima, after all. But Jim seems to think the politicians aren't retarded. Jim's wrong. <laughs> Jim's very, very wrong. So we'll, we'll jump to the Louis stream. Let's, uh... See, this is again the, the brilliant tactical mind of the 42D underwater backgammon genius of Sergan of Akkad. He joins a political party and he goes to political events and then he does a fucking live stream two days, three days after that political event and he tells the world politicians are retards hey everybody I met Nigel Farage by the way, politicians are fucking idiots that's a, that's a good stratagem <laughs> what book did you read that from? you're gonna go far you're gonna really climb the ladder, Carl it's all gone it's all gone it's all gone Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get? So this is the stream that Jim was kind of kind of butt mad about, kind of blasted out about. And I think it's um I think it comes from about this point here. So that's half court, buddy. You can hear it. It's on the clock. In terms of your philosophy, you do believe it very similar to his, in terms of what you believe. You're against you're against collectivism, are you not? That stream's still running. I don't, I don't know why the audio cut out. That could be on his stream. I'm going to let it play. Hopefully it kicks back on.
Oh, never mind. Grandpa's finding a different time code. Best we can do, or the best Sargon can do, is to influence politicians to whatever degree that is possible. Is that is oh, that terrible? Yeah, just... Okay. <laughs> why? Why is that crazy? Because I mean, that like, sounds so dumb. Hey, this YouTuber is going to influence that's politics. politics. Sounds... Dude, it's yeah, all that's, politics. that's that's just egotism. Come on, no, guys. Not. Come it's on. Politics. Dude, dude, so listen, fucking I... ridiculous. No. That's fucking ridiculous. And it, a YouTuber could never influence politics, could never influence politicians. Politicians are some high and mighty class of people that Jim has respect for for some reason, that Jim sees as being above him, and anyone who's trying to change something is egotistical. They have a savior complex. I don't know. God, you know, I mean, that could be one interpretation. That's, that's fair. That's one interpretation. Um, the other interpretation might be I don't know. I'm just spitballing here, throwing shit off the wall, seeing what sticks. Maybe YouTubers are fucking retards and they overvalue themselves. Maybe uh, thinking that you run a makeup channel or talk about the SJWs doesn't suit you best for the political realm. Uh, maybe because uh, you, you talk about how dumb feminism is doesn't mean that uh, people in the fucking European Union are really ever going to care what you have to say. Uh, maybe maybe a YouTuber that thinks they're going to go change the world because uh, they get a little ad revenue, a couple of super chats and a few likes on their video, are deluding themselves and uh, are, are, you know a little bit of hubris and ego, self-satisfaction, perhaps a bit vainglorious. I, I don't know. Just uh, spitballing. According to Jim, which is amazing. So I'm just like, Jim, have you seen politicians? Have you ever met one? Have you ever spent any time with one? You'll find they're not quite as elite as they make out. Even the most polished of them are not as clever as you think. And now I say this as a person who has recently been meeting politicians. There's me with the head of UKIP, Jared Batten, David Coburn, the head of UKIP Scotland, and Count Dankula, an absolute fucking legend. And we're at the EFDD panel on Article 13 and Article 11. Now, did we influence them on this? I would say so. Now, you're going to have to take my word for what I'm going to say, but you can corroborate this with Count Dankula, who was in the room at the time, assuming he's not also lying. I mean, you know, everyone's a liar who speaks against you, Jim. So I know that I'm a liar right now, but I'll do my best to not lie and tell you how it went. So we went into the European Union, obviously. We were invited there by the head of UKIP, and we sat down in an oval room with all of the other UKIP and... It's, it's it's part of a dissident group within the EU, a tiny, tiny group, because most of them are obviously Europhiles. And it's not just UKIP, there are some of the like, German and Dutch people in there, but um, it's mainly us. And they're talking about Article 11 and Article 13. They're boomers. They don't know what they're talking about. It's the internet. It's all confusing to them. They don't understand it. And so Batten turned to me and Danker and said, Okay, well, we've, we've talked enough. Should we refer to our experts on the subject? And I was just, and you can confirm this with Danker. I said, well, I wouldn't call us experts, but we gave them what we knew. And to be fair, we probably knew more than them because we deal with this all day, every day. And I, I know this is going to sound up my own ass, but I, I think we were influencing them. I, th I think, in fact, <laughs> when Jared came uh, the next day, we, we watched the plenary session and in do I, do I really even need to add any commentary here? I mean, I, it's hard to really... I'm amazed he's got such vocal clarity with his head so far up his own ass, but there's no muffling or anything. That's like a, that's like a circus ability. Like, Sargon, if the YouTube shit doesn't work out for you, look up the Shriner Brothers or something, because you're going to get big bucks for a trick like that. In advance of that, we sat in the MEP bar, and I was asked to make some notes for Gerard so, so he could give a speech on the floor, and so I made some notes, and he incorporated these directly into his speech to the people on the floor of the European Parliament. Now, of course, it didn't stop Article 13. We only managed to delay it with the email campaign that we did in advance, but you can't say I'm not influencing them. You can't say that. You, are, and you can say, well, it's just UKIP. But these things happen all the time. There are activists who go to politicians all the time. You're wrong, Jim. You're just flat wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. You didn't get to meet Nigel Farage either, who's an absolute legend, by the way. He's 
I, I, I'm going to admit, I fanboyed. I, Dan Kinnear was just like, you fucking fanboyed, man. I was like, I know, I know. <laughs> but let's be honest, right? The, the, this speech was amazing. He goes up 25 years ago. I, was gonna get, I said I was going to get Britain out of the EU and you laughed at me. You're not laughing now. And we had a good old laugh at that because that was just, mwah, that was such good, such good IRL trolling. I was, I was, I was genuinely blown away to meet him. I was an, a real gentleman, really, really funny guy as well. But, um, but yeah, but I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I wasn't wearing well-fitting suits and I, oh, I wouldn't want people on the internet teasing me about an ill-fitting suit that I had to buy in France because, you know, I'm well known for the suits that I wear. <laughs> Now, a couple of things. A couple of things before we move on. Now, I think I've come up with a theory on what's going on with Sargon's out-of-control ego. I think, and I'm not a scientist, remember, I'm a dum-dum. So, just grant me a little leeway here, if you would, Internet. I think the mass consumption of soy has grown Sargon's tits so large that he is the first confirmed case of a male on the Internet suffering from GOTUS. If you don't know what that is, look it up. And as for that fancy shirt we bought in France, um, <laughs> let me see if I can find the clip. I've got so much shit. We got a bunch of shit after his stream. So there's, there's a lot of stuff to go on. But that shirt looks awfully familiar. It reminds me of another shirt. Another shirt. Um, where Where was that shirt? Oh, I know where that shirt was. That was when you were uh, telling me how much you love me and cosplaying as me. I, you know, I can't say that I've ever cosplayed as another man on the internet, but I am flattered, Zargon. I am flattered. Jim, I've got to be honest, right? <laughs> I, I look, right? I'm not saying that I'm touching myself right now, okay? And I'm, I'm not saying that I'm, I'm, I'm... Look, all I'm saying is it's a good wig, okay? Nothing else. There's nothing, nothing gay about this. I'm not holding my dick as I'm wearing this wig. It's very, it's very flattering. If you want me to sign a picture and send it to you, you could add it to your collection. Put me right next to Nigel Farage for your fanboying sessions. But uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. We need to hear about how uh, important Sargon is. How dare I interrupt the master? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's important that you take my suit seriously, chaps. But um, right, so there's probably probably something else I wanted to go over there. But I think that really hits the nail on the head. But I know what, Jim. I know you're not taking any of this seriously, and that's okay. You don't have to. You don't have to take anything seriously. Why would you? You've got a crowd of teenage boys around you. I mean, you're living the dream. <laughs> I think there was, uh, I think there was, in fact, one last thing that he want that he wanted to talk about that he asked me or had something had some advice for me. So I think we'll cover that too. Uh, thanks. There's no message on that one. Theoretical Pepe, thanks for the stream, Jim. You missed my last chat I, I, again. I am trying my best to keep up with them. The only problem is, is if you refresh, it puts it back at the top. So you've got to try to scroll back down to where the last one was, and it's it's a pain in the ass. If there's a way to, and there has to be a program that, I, I don't know, I'll find a better way to, to streamline this so I'm not missing people's. Gamer Nation voice, everything else aside, I know we in the U.S. are safe, but don't you at least respect that Zargon tried to fight back against it in his unsafe country? I've already given my opinion on, uh, on Sargon. You know, I guess one of my criticisms for him might be this, and I, I think it kind of comes down, let me put this back on screen. To give you an idea of where I'm coming from with this. When I hear Sargon talk about wanting to do something, right? I'm not hearing somebody doing it for a cause. I'm hearing somebody doing it for themselves. When you look at these kind of messages, is this somebody proud of the fact that he's standing up for freedom? Is this somebody proud of the fact that he's fighting against what he sees as some sort of oppression? Or is this somebody stroking his own ego? and getting high off his own farts. I am definitely stroking my own ego and getting high off my own farts, Jim. It's not that it's terrible. Clip it. We got a little honesty from the politician. Clip that. Terrifying to be there and to have to deal with people that you only see on TV is that I think I'm better than them. Way better than them. They're garbage. <laughs> Jim, I'm not even under any threat here. 
You notice that I don't have a strike on my channel. I don't have a criminal record. I wasn't arrested for a video that I uploaded. I'm not the one who's going to go to jail if I don't pay the 800 fine. I am not in any danger. What you've said there actually applies to Dankula, if anything. But even okay, I'm, I, this actually confused me when I heard it. I just accused Sargon of being an egotist that does or that does shit to serve himself rather than other people. And his response to that is that, you know, criticism applies to Dankula and not him. I don't know why he's throwing Dankula under the bus, because in just a minute, you'll see what my opinion on Dankula is. But well, let, well, let's watch. Maybe I'm I could honestly be, be misunderstanding him on this one, but I kind of he lost the plot on this. And then I don't think it does. I think he's doing it because he thinks it's necessary. And I think you're saying these things about me because they're true about you. But you do have a, a comment on Dankula. Let's hear it. I'm doing this. Look at me. Look at me. See how important I am. He uses these things, at least it appears to me, as a form of like ego enforcement, rather than because he believes it's a just thing. <laughs> right, that's right, that's right, Jim. That's right. I've I've chosen to do this because it's not just because it makes me it makes me great because it boosts my ego. It's not that I would rather be making my video games. It's that I would be rather. Sargon, what video games are you making? Just let's look at the history of Sargon's video games. Let me just throw this up here because I I got it sitting in the in the queue. You know, I'm just on the off chance. I've got it listed. I sort of got. I titled this. Sargon's uh, ability to commit. Let's take a look at Sargon's ability to make a video game. Hi, I'm Russ. And I'm Carl. And we're two thirds of Otherworld Software. We'd like to present Necromancer, something we like to call a reverse zombie apocalypse game. You and the Necromancer are risen from the grave and determined to start the zombie apocalypse. To achieve this, you have an army of mindless, shambling zombies that you can raise to do your bidding. It won't be that easy, though, as against you are a group of survivors and heroes who know what you're doing and are coming to stop you, and they are good at killing zombies. You'll have to use all of the resources at your disposal if you hope to defeat these heroes and win the day. And by win the day, we mean turn everyone into a corpse. A corpse that you control. Oh, I remember this! This was Surrogan's video game that he raised 8,000 pounds for and then never completed. But it's okay, guys. It's okay. He refunded the money two and a half years later because that's the kind of commitment he has. And also the fact that uh, bilking uh, investors into your Kickstarter is much easier than taking a loan out at the bank and having to pay back interest. Hell of a commitment, buddy. Okay, sorry. Let's get back to the video standing on a stage and trembling because I get stage fright. It's rather that I'd be streaming in the European Union. <laughs> like, I'd rather go all the way over there for some reason. And the thing is, Jim, I've noticed, I, I was thinking about this, I mean, why the hell would he think that? But uh, sorry, we'll finish this. It's, it's, it's serving, serving more Sargon, more Sargon than, than it is others. others. Really? Uh, that's how that's the, the liberalist thing, thing felt, felt too. too. It's very weird. Very weird. But uh, to, to, to back, back to your question, question uh, do, uh, do I do I begrudge him trying to do something? No, uh, you know, you know Dankula did shit. You don't hear me talking shit about Dankula, do you? Seems weird because it seems that everything you're saying about me is actually true about Dankula. I don't know why. I don't know why you would be bothered that it's me. But I think you see something in me that you can't see about yourself. Yeah, I do. I do see something in you that I don't see in Dankula. It's called being an egotistical cunt. Yeah, there's a reason I'm not throwing shade at Dankula uh, for going to the EU. There's a reason I'm not making fun of Dankula for his suit, which, by the way, actually fit him. But there is a reason I'm, I'm saying these things about you, Sargon. I'm glad that huge intellect picked up on it. I think when you say you can't influence politicians, it's not that it can't be done. It's that you can't do it. You can't bring yourself to influence politicians. It's not this impossible. They're actually remarkably easy to influence. Have you not, in, have you not seen... Oh, I, I see a chat. I see a lot of people saying, why is there an echo? Well, our tech god, the hip kid himself, Mr. Kekistan, doesn't understand how to make video clips play without enormous echoes reverberating through them. Just throwing that out there. 
and the amount of bullshit politicians spew that's nonsense but has obviously come from far-left activists. And if retarded social justice warriors can do it, how hard can it be for people who aren't retarded? Like us. Well, like some of us anyway. But, uh, but getting back to it, that's the point, isn't it? You're wrong. You're just wrong. You think politicians are high and mighty, and they're not. And the thing is, I, I was thinking about this, why on earth do you have this kind of deep-seated insecurity, not just about me, but about the ability of YouTubers to actually have an effect in the real world? Because they are YouTubers. Uh, am I taking crazy pills? You know what, I'm going to pause this. Maybe I'm fucking insane. I mean, I am dumb. We're all dum-dums. Does anybody know if Sergen's in the chat right now? Has he been mysteriously whisked away to go to the UN? Has he been whisked away to go to the UN to fight for world peace? Okay, I'm going to shut up right now. I'm going to let the beacon of truth continue. I would say, if I was being charitable, it's because you just don't have any experience of it. But I mean, if I was being uncharitable, I might say it's because you're a loser who's playing to an audience of children and you don't think that anyone swallow a, a difficult black pill to swallow. And if you say, well, only violence is the answer now, then that means that you're completely, uh, you're completely above it all. There's no politics left. It's just war. I don't think it's quite that bad yet. Yet. I mean, one day it might be, but it's certainly not yet. But, um, honestly, I think, uh, I think your low effort shit talking has just made you lazy. You've been, you've been hanging around with people who make you lazy and stupid. I'd have to disagree. I think this stream has been high effort shit talking. I'll let you all be the judge of that, but let's continue. You rely on traps and you don't know what you're talking about repeatedly to the point where you're like, oh, come on, you know what I mean? It's like, no, you're just wrong. You are just incorrect. You're saying things that's not true. And the thing is, this is the difference, right? I've been saying things that are true. Everything I've said here is true. And you're, you're going to claim that this is part of a massive ego or that I'm getting high off my own farts. But the that really bothers him, by the way, because that's like the third or fourth time he's brought that up. Telling Sargon he has an ego really fucks his head up. The difference, I say things that are true and you say things that might be true, but aren't. That's the difference between us, Jim. It's not that you couldn't do this, it's that you choose not to do this. Whatever emotional block that you have, and whatever emotional problem that you have that makes you want to spend years grooming children online to go and troll people for your own ego and amusement, whatever, whatever that affliction is you suffer from, it's not something I suffer from. <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that's the most pathetic thing I could actually think of, but I can't think of a way of saying that that's not going to be inf offensive, insulting to you. So maybe it is. So um, anyway, was there anything else that I wanted to, uh, I want to go. Uh, oh, time for closing thoughts. He's getting to the yeah, end. I think, finally. That's, I think that's it. I think that's it. But, uh, but like I said, good luck with all the views. It's going to matter. You're going to need it. You need those dem super chats for them dem medical bills that I'm sure are piling up on your desk as we speak. I mean, <laughs> Who am I kidding? Jim, you're just a fucking liar. You are just a liar. You lie to yourself. You lie to other people. You lie about other people. And at the end of it, you're the one who profits. You're the one who makes money out of it. It's almost like you've monetized immorality. You've monetized being evil on the internet for your own personal gain, your own ego. I've monetized... I like that. I actually like that. I think I'm going to take that and uh, use it. Because if I said something like that, everybody would call me gay. But he said it, so I can totally take it and use it. He's acting like I'm fucking Voldemort. He's basically calling me Internet Satan. Jim is the devil of the digital world. Come to lure your children away like an evil Pied Piper for his troll army of super chats. That is a hot fucking take. And your, and your own viewership. But that's okay. Because when I'm sat down with MEPs telling me how corrupt the European Parliament is, when I'm doing various things and you're thinking, wow, look at that guy getting shit done. Look at him, high on his own farts. Look at that massive ego. I'll still achieve more by failing than you'll achieve by doing nothing. Isn't that incredible? Like, you won't achieve any of the things that I've achieved. And I know. I know I'm massively egotistical there. So, um... 
you know, I'll let you get back to grooming teenagers <laughs> who are totally not mad on the internet. <laughs> And I'll uh, I'll get on with the second important thing I'm doing today, which is obviously making my video. And uh, and I, you know what? I'm taking actually a really big risk tomorrow. It's really interesting. I'm actually meeting up with a bunch of BBC journo's and film crews, and they want to film a documentary, like a mini doc, you know, a sort of twenty minute thing on me. And they want to sit on Dankel and PJW, but I don't think they were interested. But um, but they want to do it on, on us, the YouTubers. And so I'm kind of nervous because you know what the BBC are like. They're going to fucking, well, well. Well, from what I've heard, uh, based on your Twitter history, you're quite familiar with the BBC. But that's another stream entirely. I mean, okay. I'll tell you what the journos are like. They're not very trustworthy. <laughs> but, um, but so I'm kind of nervous about that. But I wasn't nervous about doing this. This is nothing. Your career on YouTube is nothing. No one outside of this knows anything about you. They don't care about any of this. And I'm not trying to do this to hurt your ego. Once again, I'm But I actually agree with you. You're right. Doing YouTube is nothing. Why would anybody... <laughs> it's fucking YouTube. I don't disagree with anything he just said. I'm not out to accomplish anything. I make YouTube videos. I put on streams where I laugh at retards, like I'm doing today. That's You've said something that's factually correct, Sargon. I'm very proud of you. I'm just saying things that are true. And they didn't know about... Well, actually, they did know about me. You know, Farage actually knew who, me, knew who me and Dankula were, but, you know, that's... Again, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I state true things, and that's an ego booster. I, I've got to stop it. But anyway, Jim, I'll get off. I'll, I'll I'll let you stream snipe me for those those precious views, and I hope it goes well. I hope uh, hope you get to have a really great time. I hope you all. <laughs> I hope you all. Have, okay. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop making jokes about you and your teenage audience. Anyway, take care, everyone. And there we go. So that was Sergan's stream. Uh, he put it up like I said earlier than expected. So, Sargon of Applebee's, he was supposed to stream in the afternoon, but he's totally not, you know, this was the least important thing he had to do today. He has other important things to do, like not be in my chat and go make videos. He also totally wasn't scared, which is why he chose to stream at like four in the morning when nobody was around and disable his chat so nobody could leave comments. Very brave. It's a very brave. Now, he said, I like to lay traps. And since he wants to get, you know, he brought up the subject of traps, let's, uh, let's talk about traps. <laughs> I'm sure a few of you know where this is going. A few of you know. You know, I, I, my, oh, my goal here is like Sargon's. I'm not trying to hurt his feelings. Because as we saw from that clip earlier where he cosplayed as me, it's pretty apparent that Sargon looks up to me to some, to some level. And I, that's not like an ego thing on my part. Sargon looks up to everybody because he's literally a manlet. And if you were like four foot two, you'd have to crane your neck up to look at people. So my goal here is not to shit on Sergen, uh, but instead just to talk about things. So let's talk about traps. Now, he had left a comment in his chat room earlier, before his stream started, that was addressed to Ethan Ralph of the Ralph Retort, who hosts the Kill Streams every weeknight, Monday through Friday, on the Church of Failures channel. Now, uh, let, let's, let's take a look. Uh, this was addressed to Ralph. Ain't your wife in the UK, Ralph? I'll look her up. You know, how I like the ladies. By the way, he's a married man. Just uh, want to put that out there. The married politician telling somebody he's going to go fuck their wife. It's very politically, uh, it's, a, it's a big boy. It's a big boy move. It's a big brain move. Always. No BBC reporter would be interested in a politician talking about wanting to fuck other men's wives. Smart thinking. So anyway, he left that comment to, uh, you know, Ralph's wife, Nora. Uh, Nora had a response. I was confused when I heard this response. Maybe you can help me out. Let's read along. Is that really his account? I'm sorry to disappoint, but I lack a penis that Sargon likes on his ladies. May I recommend David Shitrat instead? Ugly as sin, but I'm sure the HRT has helped a little with his breast growth. Well, what did Nora mean by that? Maybe she expands on it. I don't care if he's chatting shit about me. He was caught getting told off by his wife for constantly flirting with trans women. 
I don't get the Onan, I might pay your wife a visit, because that just sounds like a threat. But there's nothing scary about that rejected Teletubby. So what what is she referring to? Oh, you know, my uh, my memory's coming back. I mean, I am an old man. I'm a fucking boomer. But somewhere deep, deep in my memory, I remember he did a stream with um, Kraut and T. I think it was back in 2016. Let's let's see if that sheds any light on this. There we go. That's a on his stream. A Facebook message pops up from his wife. Question: Why can't you help yourself when it comes to flirting with women? Just a couple of days after the whole booth thing, you message a fucking transgender telling them how good looking they are. What the fuck is your problem? Clearly cannot trust you. Why would his wife be bringing up the fact that he's flirting with trannies? That's so weird. But, you know, that just that jogged my memory when it came to the trap discussion. You know, can, can we make a, a just a, a guess when it comes to the skeptosphere on YouTube? You know, there, there's some commonalities when it comes to these uh, big brain thinkers. And I just want to see if you're, you're catching any of that. Uh, here's a, you know, let, let's start with Sargon, because that's what the stream is about. Uh, this was a YouTube comment he left a long time ago. From Sargon of Akkad, you don't actually know what a cuckold or stepdaughter means, do you? It means I'm cucking someone else, you numbnuts. And then he gets a response where somebody tells him how fucking stupid he is. Uh, for raising another man's child, and that that would make him a cuck. But it's interesting, because this theme of cuckoldry seems to resonate within this community. Well, take Kraut and T, for example. This was a post on a forum, where he said he was never bothered with the idea of other men fucking his girlfriend. That it's just totally basic biology, bro. Just basic biology if she's craving some dick. Oh, and let's not forget Bunty King. I'm a cuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking cuck, guys. Or how about, you know, Mundane Matt? You ever hear the lovely story about the meth whore that he dated who uh, fucked his best friend? And then you got the other guy, the 32-year-old, the one who fucking knew I liked the stripper that I was dating, uh, and then she still fooled around with him and, and everything that night that we met because we had devised the plan. To get her to like me, but it was fucked up. That's so weird. It's like every male skeptic is a fucking cuck. It's like every one of them is a cuck. Is there an uncuck skeptic? I don't know, but we sure are finding a lot of them. A lot of them that are getting cucked on the internet. But you know, I, I just again, I'm a small thinker. I don't know these things. I'm not a big-brained big boy like Daddy Sargoon, Sargon of Akkad. Savior of the West. The YouTuber that will bring world peace. I mean, you heard him. He went to the EU. He's a big boy now. And they're influenced by him. Like, I remember before we lived under this oppressive feminist um, ideology. I'm sure you all remember the day that happened when feminism took over the world. That would be the day that Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn gave a speech at the UN. Which, by the way, Carl, is way more continents than the EU. Just the FYI, I know you're a little slow on the math. Uh, but once they gave that speech, clearly they're so influential and they're YouTubers that the world fell under the, uh, the rule of feminism. So I thank you for going to the EU to save us from that. I'm sure you'll have as much influence on politicians as they did. I'm sure, I'm sure we're all thinking about it. And while Sergen might have uh, folders dedicated to me, uh, that doesn't mean that he's obsessive with people that make fun of him. I mean, sure, you could look at his history and you could look at things like Richard Spencer saying he's basically an idiot and then him writing fucking form letters to the alt-right saying how he totally isn't interested and doesn't think about them at all. And this is what adult men do when somebody makes fun of them. They write form letters addressed to the people making fun of them, telling them they're totally not thinking about them, that they're not living rent-free in their head. Oh my God, this guy, I swear. Okay, um, well, you know, originally today was going to be a skeptic day. I was going to have David Shitrat stuff. I was going to have more Bunty King stuff, more Monday Matt stuff. That's going to get moved to next Sunday because Sergen wanted to take front center stage. So I'm fine with that. I can oblige and move around my schedule a little bit. I'm cool with it. He's an important guy. So I need to adjust for him. I, you know, I need to know my place and I'm totally cool with that. Uh, he gave his closing thoughts. He thinks I'm Lucifer. <laughs> running a mercenary army of children on the internet. 
And I'm, I'm fucking fine with that. I'll take that title. I will live with that title. Uh, but what are my what are my final thoughts on Surgan? What uh, what do I think when I think Surgan? Uh, well, I think of an egotistical maniac uh, that is really up his own ass, and that's probably surrounded by yes men that dick ride him for potential fame and money, and will never ever tell him that he's completely off the fucking rails. I'm you know reminded of a man that thinks that just because he associates with people that accomplish things, that he is accomplished. He's the only retard on earth that could fuck up what it means to be vainglorious. Here's a pro tip, Sargon. To be vainglorious, the accomplishment has to be your own, not other people's. Just because you associate with a politician does not make you one. Just like me associating with a rich man does not suddenly make me wealthy. I understand that you're very hyped on what you're doing, and uh, maybe you will change the world. But my God, I really hope you do go into politics. I mean, you seem to think that I don't want you to. But you are a fucking retard. And the amount of entertainment I'm going to get out of it, and I think everybody on the internet is going to get out of it, I, I don't care what the fuck happens to Europe. We need to get you into office. I, I'm almost willing to be your campaign manager to fucking guarantee it. Because I can't imagine the sort of fucking damage you are going to do to yourself and everybody around you. Because you are so fucking stupid, it's painful. Um, but thanks for the assassination stream. You're, you hit stream. You're going to put me in my place and teach me a lesson. Uh, you fucking rank amateur. Uh, maybe try a little harder next time. I, I don't know what to tell you. You look like a fucking buffoon. Uh, this has been fun. I haven't ragged on a fucking moron like you in a long time. I mean, he said, oh, Jim, you got a little lazy. You might be right. I think you've reinvigorated me. <laughs> because it's amazing to me. That you are almost on par with fucking fur fags. That, like, you're right up there with diaper furs, Sargon, when it comes to stupidity. Uh, and you got, you got, you got the energy flowing for me. You've really got me invigorated with this sort of shit. So I thank you, humble Applebee's Waitron. See, that's the politically correct term, by the way. It's a Waitron. I know it's fucking weird, isn't it? Thank you, uh, Applebee's Waitron for, um, for doing that, for giving me a little booster shot in my arm. So that's my Sargon stream. I hope you guys liked it. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. I hope you enjoyed the stream. And uh, you have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy yourselves. One week later. Uh, some interesting things have happened. I, I thought we could go over them. Because today, things started popping up. Racist troll who sent rape tweet addresses UKIP members. Uh-oh. Oof. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. I'm pretty sure didn't didn't Sargon smugly chuckle during his last live stream and say, "Oh, Jim, they'll never they'll never write an article about me like that. Oh, you're being silly." And literally a week later, here we are. Part of the party's attempt to attract younger internet savvy supporters. I I don't know. Is this article saying that Carl is grooming grooming younger people to come to the party? <laughs> Revealed bizarre views of UKIP's sinister rising stars. A UKIP conference overshadowed by warnings that the party's new leader, Jared Batten, is dragging the party to marginalization at the extremes of politics has been addressed by controversial figures, including a YouTuber who has even outraged alt-right listeners, asking them to act white and using the N-word. The newly joined UKIPper is notorious for publicly threatening a female MP with rape, bizarre opinions on women's rights, and the age of <laughs> okay, and the age of sexual consent. And this is in quotes, depending on the child. I think it's yeah, it depends on the child, really, doesn't it? I was well under the age of uh, 11 when I started having sex. And so what I like to do is put people on the, uh, on the other side of the argument. It's like, what you have to do is you have to say that someone like me, not anybody else but me, that I was too stupid to appreciate the nature and quality of what I was, what I was doing at the time. Hmm. But please convince me I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's, yeah, it depends on the child, really, doesn't it? Because... Some kids. That's really the cat say. That's, Well, <laughs> it's true, and you know, it's it's true though. You know, it's you know, it should really be a case by case basis. But I can see why 
the whole thing. But it's, it's not really something I'd ever put too much thought into. Oh, oh, Sargon, what are you doing? <laughs> Holy shit, buddy! I figured you were gonna fuck this up somehow, but you're like going, you're going super speed on this. Now, what's my opinion on this? I'll give you my honest opinion. I think Carl was probably taken out of context in regards to uh, depends on the child and maybe misspoke or there's a larger context to the conversation. You see, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt because you'd have to be a real piece of shit to take some audio and selectively play it and try to paint the other person as like some kind of weird child groomer or sex predator. You know, I mean, you'd have to be You'd have to be a scumbag to do that, huh, Carl? But I'm not a scumbag. I wouldn't do that. Now, I can't speak for everybody else. I mean, other people will have different opinions on your statements about uh, it depends on the age of the child. I could picture them saying things like, I don't know, like this. Well, I mean, to me, that says he's uh, he's definitely not weird. He's definitely not grooming them. It's really fucking creepy. But, you know, that's not me. I'm a good boy. <laughs> now, I would call what's happening to you right now, there's a, there's a phrase for it. Uh, it's poetic justice. To see your attempt at black PR basically thrown back in your face. To see the literal thing you tried to do one week ago, now done to you. I mean, that's got to sting. You can't get really offended about it, can you? I mean, you can't get angry with the mainstream media for doing to you what you essentially tried to do to me. But, um, you know, some people are inclined to sue. They're, they're kind of soy riddled bitches when somebody takes a shot at them. Like, say, Sargon of a God. I'm looking for a British lawyer who is interested in discussing a potential lawsuit about libel and slander by the UK media. Please ask them to email me. And that's up on his uh, Facebook account. If you, <laughs> if you have any good lawyers you can recommend to Sargon to sue newspapers, quoting him saying things. Feel free to uh, to hit him up. He needs your help. What could possibly go wrong with the waiter from Applebee's saying ridiculous shit that's getting dredged up? And I know this is a black PR campaign. I know that the mainstream media is shit. Everybody knows that the mainstream media is shit. But I highly doubt it ends here. See, they're only now just looking into you. And they're finding the surface level shit. I, I can't even imagine what they'll go digging for. That's why this fucking picture exists, Sargon. Because it accurately describes what you do. You go from group to group to group, co-opting or killing it. You drive it into the dirt. So even the groups that you make and then shit on on your way out are aware of what you do. And here's the Grim Reaper Sargon knocking on the door of UKIP. So he can mount fucking Nigel Farage's head over his fireplace as a trophy. Well done. Well done, buddy. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's some good going there. So, uh, well done. Thank you for showing me how politics is done. This has been a brilliant demonstration of how to really save the West. Squeaky, squeaky. Good, good, good going. If Farage knows who I am, give me one degree of separation to Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. The smug, it's getting bigger and gaining strength. Meeting Farage, I actually sat in a meeting with him as I met him twice. Pretty in regular contact with the leader of UKIP. What the hell is that? This is actually the second position where I've been one degree of separation from Trump. It's, it's getting closer and closer and closer. But other things I will do will make the news. And you know they'll make the news. And if you Google my name, you'll find lots of news articles about me. The perfect storm of self-satisfaction. Argon, listen to me. In your madness, you've taken individualism to such an extreme that you're destroying the world around you. Who cares? All that matters is the individual. Sargon, need more dopamine. My life is brilliant. My name is James. I'm only seven. And that explains why I've never had a best friend until you came along. The people stopped.
stop and they look at us and they say that it's wrong they say you're a pedophile you're a pedophile you're a pedophile they say your name is Clive and you're 45 but you don't let that come between us and you make me hold your